Go away. Hi. Hey, what's going on, man? Um, I just hung out with Trey for a few minutes. Oh, did you? Ate dinner. Tom Anderson was there, too. Ah. Oh. I think I've got the phone ringing over there. I wonder who that is. I, I've been having a lot of server errors like the pat last week where like Google Plus would freeze about every three minutes. Oh, really? And I was complaining to Google constantly and then for a while there it felt like they weren't responding. But finally they responded back. But now since they like launched the on-air hangouts and that, like I'm not getting the server errors anymore. It's like they fixed it finally. Huh. I wonder how that happened. <coughs> It's getting to the point that I couldn't really use Google Plus anymore. You drive me nuts. You get to that point a lot. I, you know what I think it is? I think it's, um, I think it's activity. I think there's like too much activity. I just got a uh, someone trying to call me. Huh. I wonder who that is. I don't like to answer the phone unless I know who it is. You know. I like this new phone. Well, we'll see. So, uh, I think what it is, Billy, is I think that they have things in place. Like, do you remember that uh, woman who was doing the, like, alphabet, like, A to Z posts and all that stuff? No, I don't know who you're talking oh, about. Oh, what was her name? Krista or whatever her name was? Krista was... Uh, let me, hold on, let me find that. Let's see what the issue with that one is. Yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, Chris, Krista Ray was doing this thing where she was, like, posting, I think it was, like, the alphabet or something like that, and she would just, uh, you know, like, post all these posts, like, a bunch in a row, like, 50 in a row or something, and I think that if you do that, Google, like, thinks you might be a spammer, and so they basically lock up your account. I don't know that they... Yeah. Delete it, but they. I think there's so. I think there's activity that you can do in in Google Plus. Various activity, unknown activity. We don't know exactly what it all is, but related to the frequency of posting or commenting or maybe whatever it is. That I think I think people trip like some sort of like a spam. Thing. Yeah, there are some for that. There, there's definitely that for commenting, but. When I was having server errors, it wasn't about activity. Like I, I could, a few for one day there, I didn't even go on Google Plus for about 36 hours, and I was still having problems. Like it wasn't dependent on anything I was doing. But huh. by the sound of it, a lot of other people were having the same problem. But it it seems fixed right now. Huh. Now. Um do you think it's uh, related to uh, your dial-up, that you're using dial-up to get on the Google Plus? No. Um, I'm kidding. <laughs> Hola, how's, Hi. It going? how's it going? Jan? Hi. Oh. What's going I'm on? I'm tired, actually. Uh, Jan, what are you Jan? Um, Helen, I couldn't see you there with I'm your reindeer. <coughs> <laughs> my horny thing. My antlers. Yeah, I'm clogging my network for the next network. four minutes. Um. <laughs> so, Billy, what do you think it was? Um, I don't know. I think some people suspect it might be like some sort of problem w of Google managing, like how much, act uh, how many new people are on the site, or something like that. So completely unrelated to anything that's activity based, just kind of random. I I guess kind of random. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Hmm. 
Yeah, yep, excuse me, I missed what was. Billy was talking about sort of the random server errors that he's been having. Oh. I was having that for a while. Yeah, I've been having a lot of that. Yeah, like you're getting so severe I couldn't see any hangout for more than like five minutes. Oh, wow. That's, yeah, I've just been having just general notification problems and that kind of stuff, but nothing like that. Yeah, like it was really bad and like it, if I tried to click on my notifications while I was having a server error, it would just say loading, 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 and then mm -hmm. finally it would say uh, there has been an error connecting to our server. Please try again later. Huh. Seem you had a yeah, I've had that with the notifications, but that's not it. But. It's like I get every problem that Google ever has. <laughs> What, but that's odd, Billy. That it would that it would get to uh, that it would be that you get these problems so often. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe yeah. they they're using Billy's account to test things. Right. <laughs> you think? I mean, Billy is active. I always, you know, Billy is like when he gets into something, he's dedicated. Yeah, if there's yeah. a hang out here. So I mean, whatever it is, I mean, Billy's in you know all kinds of hangouts all the time now. Oh, yeah. So I wonder, Billy, if there's not something that you're doing somehow, you know, that's tripping something. Well, uh, I don't know why it suddenly stopped. Then, because Olsen say hung out like these hangouts on air. Yeah. Like I'm not getting the problems, and I haven't really changed anything else. It's like they fixed the problem. They well, actually maybe. said that what well, it, the Google Help people they did tell me in a message that that they are investigating the problem a lot because I, apparently a lot of other people are having it. So it, it huh. did sound like they're treating it like there was an actual issue there. Huh. Maybe you're just getting more more issues too because you're using it more than everybody else. I mean, right. just, so you're noticing it. I don't know. Helen, what's going on in Greece this morning? Um, not much. It's um, it's Saturday night here. People are still out. <laughs> Saturday night <laughs> still. It's not morning yet. Well, yeah, it's morning, but people are still out. So what time, <laughs> what time is it in Greece? It's three thirty. You're up at three thirty in the morning just for the heck of it. I was editing some photos, so yeah. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty early. I can't. It's not early. It's late. I I I I took some portraits today, and then. What did you shoot today, Helen? Uh, a very pretty girl. Oh, okay. And, uh, and I liked some of the photos, so I wanted to edit them right away. I was having fun with that, <laughs> so I didn't want to stop. That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, what, what about edit? you? What are you working on today? Um, we just literally got home from Hayward. And I'm uploading photos, so I'm clogging my network. Um, I bought Kat a uh, flight lesson for her birthday last year. Ah, okay. And so she just got around to doing that. So I've got, you know, a couple of photos from uh, just flying around the bay today. Ah, if okay. anything comes out. So some aerial shots, huh? Yeah. Just If anything comes out, it'll be pretty cool. We flew out um, from Hayward up around the bay, over the Bay Bridge, uh, Circled uh, the headlands and Golden Gate. And you know how old I am? <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I asked her to tell me. Hey, oh, what's going on here? Trey Ratcliffe, look at that. Hey, Trey, what's going on, brother? We have a celebrity tonight. But you have two, two for one. <laughs> oh, two. We got who's? Oh, we got Tom Anderson there too. Look at that. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Hey, Tom, how's it going, man? I, it's going good, but I feel I feel bad now because we just hung up on another girl in a, in a chat, and I told her we were busy, and now it's going to look like we were being jerks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I thought I thought we were going to talk, but I've learned on this trip that Trey is a cam whore. He cannot stay off this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so we might as well invite her back in if, if she's available. I don't want to be rude. We could invite her back in. You want me to invite her in? What's her name? Oh, is it private? Is this well, these on-air hangouts, you have to invite. Yeah, you can't do public. You but it, but this is streaming on YouTube, right? Uh, it, well, it's streaming on Google Plus. If we save it to at the end, if I save it, it'll go on YouTube. Ah. 
but it streams to Google Plus. But well, we can, you know, Lily, the girl that was in the Hangout, would you like her to to join? I'll, yeah, I can invite Lily here. Okay. Uh, let's see, Lily L. Lily L. There she is. All right, Thomas. It looks like you're in some sort of a boudoir. Well, yeah, this is a this is the red room at my house, Trey. You didn't see this room yet. Ah. This is it's it's velvet red lined walls. It's got a bed over there that's in the shape of a heart with a hot tub. Hmm. <laughs> Delightful. With a hot tub mode. A round mattress with the quarters. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You know what? It, you know what I did actually. My house is totally under construction right now, so it's just ripped apart. And after we did our first uh, episode of Photo Talk, Chris Chabot gave me some constructive feedback. He said your background is just terrible. <laughs> it's plastic, and it looks like like the Dexter Kill Room, you know. You do well, yeah. It's always so dark. You look a little creepy. Right, right. Like I should have like uh, horns or something. So, uh, so I decided to uh, change my background. So there are these curtains in the dining room, and so I just closed the curtains behind me. There you go. So I tried to simplify it. So what are you guys doing down in LA? What's going on down there? Um, we're just goofing off. Um, I started working on, actually this has been sort of a post-processing day. I've got a huge pile of our cemetery photos I've been processing. Oh, oh cool. nice. Yes, very exciting. That was a nice evening. Yeah, I like those sculptures that we shot, or that sculpture primarily. I processed, uh, I was looking at those the other day, I was thinking I should process some more. You should. What have you been up to today? Mm. Well, I wrote a big rant about Flickr, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that. That was pretty well done, I thought. Bashing Flickr some more. Good. Yeah. Um, and then, because I looked at the compete.com uh, numbers today, and so the last, since May, the month before Google Plus launched, Flickr's uh, unique user traffic is down 20% according to compete. Nice. What I don't know that the traffic is down. Flickers. Oh. So you know, it, it feels like a lot of people from Flickr are coming over to Google Plus. To me. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Helen, what do you think? You were big on Flickr. You're still big on Flickr. I'm still big on Flickr. Well, no, I I think I think they put me on a blacklist and then they let me out for a while and then they put me back in because. Like it'll go for like a month with no nothing on explore, and then suddenly like five or six images go in, and then I'm out again. It's been um, over a year since I've been on explore. I've tried to get quite a few friends from Flickr. Yeah, I've tried to get some some friends from Flickr over here, but. Um, but do you find do you find do you feel like? Them, but a lot haven't. Do you feel like that the traffic is less at Flickr than it was six months ago? Um. Yeah, well, when I post, I pretty much get the same traffic when I don't post. It's, you you know, I, I, don't, I haven't really noticed a difference, oh. to tell you the truth. Yeah, so I did that, and then uh, I was editing some photos of a squirrel that I took. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. A squirrel? Yeah. There's these great squirrels at UC Berkeley that they just kind of hang out, and you can get like right in their face. They're so like domesticated almost. And so I figure, you know, squirrel shots will probably do well on Google Plus. Yeah, it's always a surefire winner. That's exactly. why I just put up a video of a porcupine. So yes. I, was, I was trying to go, you know, <laughs> see if all woodland creatures have equal bearing. <laughs> the, key, the key thing with squirrels is you got to get them to do tricks. Like this one, he thought I was feeding him food, but I was giving him like the cigarette butt, so it looked like he was smoking it. You know, stuff like non kidding. Right. <laughs> No, I can't do that. That would be bad. Uh, the squirrels are cute. So where did you find this porcupine tray? Well, my uh, kids and I watch a lot of YouTube videos. And um, I'm, I'm working on a photo of uh, Hearst Crypt right now while I'm talking. Oh. And um, what happened was we came across this guy that sings all these parodies of... Uh, crazy animal videos and makes really catchy jingles. 
And so my kids and I have been running around the house singing that porcupine eating a carrot song for the past week, and it's still stuck in my head. Wait, is this a honey badger video? <laughs> no. No? No. I don't know what that is. You don't know what the honey badger is, really? No, I don't. Uh, oh, you've got to watch the honey badger. I don't badger. go blue as quickly as you do. The honey badger videos are great. I don't. He's on Twitter now, I think, the honey, ba honey badger. <laughs> That's funny. Oops, okay. I was broadcasting all of I was broadcasting you the entire time apparently. Oh well. I, <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, that's I apologize okay. to everybody for that. Everybody was watching you drink Coors beer. Well, at least it's in life. Right. Coors, the uh, Golden Rockies or whatever they call it. Banquet beer, yeah. There we go. Now I got it back on everybody who's talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want me to yeah. share my screen here, Thomas? You can check yeah, it out. Let's, yeah, let's see what you're processing. Show us. All right, just a minute. Give me give me uh, 30 seconds to get a final cleanup, because this is the big reveal. All right. You, wanna, you know what it's like. You don't like to show works in progress. Right. You can't open up the kimono too much, only when we're in yeah. private, Thomas. That's right. So, so Trey and I, what Trey's working on uh, earlier this week, we were uh, we went to I think it's it's one of the cemeteries in Hol in Colma. It's the Italian one. I think it's like Holy something or other. And uh, and it was dark and it was night, so we had to kind of improvise with some car lights and long exposure shots. And uh, one of the tombs here is uh, William Randolph Hearst's tomb. And I wanted to show Trey that tomb because. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw, he did some wonderful photographs from Hearst Castle, and, uh, which is a wonderful place. Uh, I need to get down there and take pictures at some point myself. But uh, I was struck that Hearst's tomb, Hearst Castle is this amazing monstrosity. It's huge. It's giant. And it's just spectacular. It's beautiful. Uh, and then Hearst's tomb is kind of big, too, but it's... It's so understated compared to Hearst Castle. And you'd almost think like uh, you should have some sort of a bigger tomb, you know? It's a big tomb as far as tombs go. Um, so we tried to shoot it in the dark, which I know Trey's just going to have come up with this like amazing shot of it. That's okay. Okay, ready? Here we go. Let me share my screen. Hold on. Let me. Go here to this window. I'll click share screen. Um, wait, let me make sure. Let me make sure Tom approves first. I don't. You don't approve? Well, <laughs> well I don't know what Thomas wow. just said, and like built it up. <laughs> it, it doesn't even look like it's night. So, it just looks like the sun is setting in a not that great location. Oh. I'm well, not, wow. I'm not super excited about about it. But I appreciate your honesty, Tom Anderson. All right. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Let's see it. Hearing it. Now, Tom, or, uh, yeah, Thomas does know that there's a big, there's kind of a glow, this weird glow from San Francisco. Wow. Like this. Wow. I like that. I think that's great. I don't, I think if you could emphasize that glow, like for the, un, so the untrained eye yeah. would not feel that that's a glow. But if you could accentuate it, uh, make it feel a little otherworldly, because right now, it just, you know, no, a lot of people don't know where light sources are coming from. Uh, I, I feel like I can tell that it's at night. Uh, it looks like a long exposure. How many seconds is that exposure? Um, I think it was 30 seconds. Here, I'm going to do some noise. Do you use, what do you use for noise reduction, Thomas? Lightroom, mostly. Oh. I usually do it later, like now, in uh, Noiseware. Oh, you're using yeah. Noiseware? Yeah. Yeah, there is a little bit of noise there, isn't there? You don't like Adobe Lightroom 3's noise reduction? I do, but, you know, uh, usually Lightroom is where I start and Photoshop is where I end, and I do a lot of um, stuff in Photoshop, so I my last step is usually the... Uh, the uh, noise reduction. I just think that's a, a, a remarkable given how dark it was when we shot it there, right? 
Yeah, I think that grass is a little too green. I'm going to drop that down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Get that a little more normal. Sorry, Thomas. I was just showing. I didn't mean to take over your hangout. No, room. no. This is great. I love seeing this. I've been waiting to see this. It's quite nice. You no, know, you can tell, too. If you zoom in, the stars are a little bit blurred. Right. Because mm -hmm. I, I, kept, I kept on my shutter a little too long. I think you can only do 30 seconds before the stars start to spin. And you did how long? Yeah. Honestly. Well, this is, it's really, it was an HDR with 15 and 30 seconds. Okay. So we have a little ghosting going on in the stars there. I want to see more stars. Like, I wish that was more apparent. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah well, that would have been a great, a great site for Star Trek. Yeah. Well, you could do a few things. I can make the stars pop out more here. Let me do an adjustment layer. Like, if, if this were less bright, like the transition into yeah, I'm going to make an adjustment layer and make the stars pop out more. So if I, if I squeeze yeah. in there. I squeeze in this stuff. That looks interesting, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Now let me zoom back out here. But I don't want the whole thing to be that dark, so I've got a mask there. I can come back through here and lighten up the bottom part. What if you brought the temperature down? Or do you like it that uh, warm? You want that golden berm sky. Yeah, I kind of like it because it's weird. Yeah. Crypt. Um, do you ever use... Uh, um, what's the name of that software package you use? Uh, which one? The, your new plug-in thing. Oh, the little effects thing? It's uh, yeah. FX, uh, FX Photo Studio Pro. Oh, okay. It's pretty cool. It's only like thirty bucks, but it does some, you know, it has some cool just drag and drop sort of effects that I like. Here's another one. I took uh, with Thomas uh, two nights ago here in L.A. Oh, you, wow. Tom's and Tom's. oh, the Tom. This is Tom Anderson. Sorry. Right. <laughs> Too many Toms in my life, you guys. Yeah. Well. <laughs> uh, that's great too. Look at that. Wow. Look at that depth. Now this is what this is the view from Tom's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> My bathtub. Right. Yeah. This is the hot tub out on Tom's deck. Right. We actually there is a well not a view like that from there but there is a view there. I've never taken a shot from up there. Hmm. That's great. So so what else have you guys been shooting down there? Really, that's about it. We've been doing a lot of post processing, and. Um, uh, Things of this nature, I guess. Yeah. 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 We only went to shoot one time in four, has it been four days? or? Yeah. We've been eating a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's important, too. Yeah. Have, you, have, you, have either of you guys been to the Google offices down there in L.A.? Yeah, I went in there. Um, I guess you went in there, too, to see. Those are, it's a nice group of people in there. Well, I haven't been to the one in L.A., the, 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 well, the, the new ones, you know, the ones with the, with the Geary building, apparently? Do they have a Geary oh, building? Oh, no. Apparently, no. they have a, a, a Frank Geary building there and down there. Oh. It's new. The, not the binocular thing, is it? Yeah, the binocular thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> have they moved in there already? I'm pretty sure they have, yeah. Google has moved in there now. That was big news when they were going to, but... Wait, so Frank Gehry made that binocular thing? I think he did. I think he did, like, the architecture on part of that building or something. Oh, I didn't know that. But that would be cool. I know, uh, Tom, I saw your uh, Gehry shot the other day. Yeah. I love his stuff. I love shooting his stuff. Yeah, I um, I watched a, a TED video with him, and um, it was quite funny. Like, this guy that was interviewing him, they were, he was a lot more relaxed and funny than I... I don't, I don't know anything about him. It's the first time I ever watched. He seemed like an interesting guy. And um, I don't know much about his work, so the binocular thing surprised me. Well, you know what I think is great about him? Is that he's this super creative guy, and somehow, because he's ri risen to, like, the pinnacle of where he is, he just gets to do all these really, really crazy things that cost crazy money. Yeah. And he's got this vision, this artistic vision, 
that you know he can just build stuff like that. And I don't, I don't, I don't know that very many people other than him could get away with that. You know. Right. Yeah, that was one of the first things they talked about in that interview, where they were just saying that he gets to do fun stuff, and, and it's very unusual for an architect to to not be sort of weighed down by commercialism. Right. Especially that that field, right? Like you've always always got huge concerns and well, and the cost to build that stuff. Yeah. yeah I heard they had to on the on the Disney uh, hall there down in L.A. I heard that even after it was done, they had to go back and like reapply something on the steel or something because it was blinding people, blinding motorists and stuff. Um, I I heard about that too. Have you heard about the Aria Hotel too if, in Vegas? You know, I know down there by the pool on the Cosmopolitan, it's like blazing hot, like blistering. yeah. They call they call it a death ray. Yeah. <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, it's funny because the the material on that building, I shot that building as well too, and I shot it because it looked just like a Frank Gehry, that sort of the that stuff that he's using on on the Brain Center there in Vegas, and the same stuff in downtown LA. And uh, I had heard that too, and in the TED thing. He also, this one girl, when I posted that photo on Google+, Plus, she said, yeah, he, he made this cool thing in Chicago or Boston or somewhere, but it wasn't built well, and I didn't know what she was talking about. So he mentioned in, in his TED Talk, he's like, there was no leaks in my building and, and wherever she said <laughs> like, I guess there's these rumors that this stuff isn't... Well, that's, that's specifically the building in Boston at MIT. Yeah, yeah. At MIT. Yeah, he and he didn't make any mistakes as far as leaks. Go. I I think he 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 has said that most of his buildings leak. Oh well, he was he, yeah. was, he was trying to. He was happy about that one. He was trying to imply otherwise. Maybe that was maybe it was a joke I wasn't privy to. That was his one building that didn't leak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I th I think it was something like that. That uh, that building it's called the Status Center in Boston, and it's pretty cool. Uh, here I'll show it to you. I shot it. Hey Thomas, I really like your that bridge photo, photo you made the other day. Oh, from from Memphis, yeah, that, I love that. Yeah, Thank it's you. Crazy. Okay, share selected screen. Okay, I am sharing now. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, this this is that status center. Uh. There we go. That Gary built. It's a remarkable building. It's just uh, these are photographs I took of it. Wild. But it's just wild. It's a crazy building. It's cool. It's like reflections where you're like shooting up and uh, oh yeah on things. She seems like a friendly girl. <laughs> yeah, that's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> She modeled for me that day, but uh, yeah, it's a. Um, I love Gary stuff. I think it's great. You know who else is great is uh, have either of you guys shot or been to the Seattle Central Library up in Seattle? No. Yeah. Is that Calatrava? No. Who is the architect on that? Thomas, do you do you uh, lie down on your back for a lot of shots? Yeah, definitely. Looking straight up, yeah. Yeah, definitely, all the time. I'll just get down low. Do white shirts when you go on a photo shoot? Oh, I get, there's tons of pictures of me out laying down on the ground. You're dirtying, dirtying up your shirt? <laughs> yeah, I kind of don't care, you know. I don't spend a lot of money on clothes. <laughs> you know, even if it's a nice shirt, like a nice white shirt, let's buy it at Costco. <laughs> Gee. Anyways, um, so that's the... the uh, the Seattle Central Library, uh, who was the architect? I know his name, but now it's, I'm blanking on it. Central Library. Uh, what is his name? I'll have it tagged. But it's another, as far as architecture goes, uh, Rem Kulhas. Is that who you said, Trey? Uh, no, I said Santiago Calatrava. He's a Spanish architect. Right. 
Yeah, Rem Koolhaas, he did a similar sort of, uh, It's I guess it's sort of like, not. It, it's not so much Geary-esque as much as it's, uh, you know, it, he just did, did this spectacular sort of uh, architecture that you wouldn't be able probably to do, unless maybe you're him, or a guy like him or Geary, but... The Seattle Central Library is just uh, remarkable. It has a lot of colors, a lot of like yellow lighted escalators, a lot of uh, just uh, and the nice thing about the Seattle Central Library is that it's because it's public, you can just go right in there and shoot. There's like no problem. That's pretty. Yeah, I love these. Like it's like a heart. This one. Big red sort of thing. It's all That's red. Awesome. Like, isn't that cool? This library, the architecture is. I love shooting architecture. It's one of my favorite things to shoot. Modern architecture, contemporary architecture. Anyways, I got a few too many of my wife in that one. <laughs> <coughs> I've shot that Disney Hall, uh, Tom, that you shot, but I haven't. Uh, I haven't processed them. I shot it like a couple times two years ago. Hmm. I, I want to go back there. I just, I happened to. I w this was very unplanned. I was just driving by, and I saw it, and I was actually on the phone the entire time I shot. Uh, I shot that. And I was like, <laughs> Is that right? And I had it like my. I was like scrunched, like holding it on my ear, you know, pushing it to my head and trying to talk to someone during the entire shoot. And I, but I did like it. I, I was, I was kind of like, wow, I knew I, I got something because you know I don't share that much. So I, I, but I know I'm gonna probably share this one. And then I, I thought you, I thought you were gonna tell me you took it with your phone. No, no. <laughs> I, did. I just sent it to the person I was talking to after that. Uh, and I took it about a month ago, and then Trey saw it, and he said, oh, it's good, you know, put it out. Yeah, that's great. I like, I loved it. Um, and it's actually much more, if, if you're standing there, there's a lot more color there. So I really kind of backed it off. I made it almost monochromatic. In that. I thought that looked good, though. I thought that focused more on the lines and on the detail and on the architecture. Yeah. Um, there's some wonderful black and white photographs of that building that Ivan Makarov has taken. Um, yeah, that guy's good. I've never gotten a good photo of that building. But I was jealous. Gary also did the space, uh, the Rock and Roll Hall, uh, Rock and Roll, is it the museum or Hall of Fame? No, museum. The Rock and Roll Museum up in Seattle by the Space Needle. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, where are our Yvonne's? Uh, let's see. Hey, Helen, did you get to talk to Antonis a little bit? Yeah, yeah, I did, in fact. Good. And uh, we're meeting up on Monday for a coffee. Good. When I left that hangout, did it cut mm -hmm. everyone off? No. No, we were uh, there for a I bit. wonder, because yeah, I, I stayed. Morning, you know, I so stayed I wondered if, if it stopped when I left. No, 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 no. It kept Good. on going, but we couldn't invite anybody else, so we, we broke it up after a while. Oh. Mm. Yeah, you guys should, if... If I leave an on-air uh, thing, like if Thomas leaves, we it should dies. be able to invite other people in. I think it dies, doesn't it, or does it still stay alive? No, they just said no, it, it keeps going. Alive, but, but, but you can't invite somebody new. So these are um, these are Ivan Makarov's uh, photographs of that. I mean, he did them all in black and white of uh, the, the Disney Center. Oh, wow. Turned out really nice, I thought. It's a nice long exposure, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The greens are the problem. Well, it's and it's tilted. It tilts it, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I love this one. Yeah, it's a, it's a great one. It'll be great. Did you move? No, but I can't. No. 
Those are good. Ivan is good. Plus, he's got an awesome name that makes him sound like a Russian spy. Yeah. He, he sounds like uh, he sounds like he's a, a, a you know who the first, before I ever met him the first before I ever saw him for the first time. Uh, he was in a group on Flickr and he was telling everybody I think he was like six foot four and like this crazy like uh, Russian with all these guns and <laughs> all this stuff and. Uh, and when I met him, he's like, uh, he's more like 5'10", kind of like a skinny, wiry guy. But I thought of him, did you guys ever see that episode of The Sopranos where they had that Russian that they couldn't kill? No. No, he was, he was uh, like a Russian guy that they took him out into the, they thought they were trying to kill him out in like the ice, out in the snow. He escaped and got away, and you always expected him to come back in a future episode of The Sopranos, but he never came back, ever. Hmm. Even though he escaped. It was like one of those loose endings, you know? But uh, that's, what, that's how I kind of pictured Yvonne, is he's like this big, burly Russian. Thomas, Thomas Hawk is a cool name. <laughs> uh, oh, Daniel Ibanez is here. Let's do an art hangout sometime. Yeah, that sounds good. I don't see him. Is he in here? That's, no, yeah, he's, he made a comment on the uh, thread. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here, I'll, I'll invite him into the room in case... Yeah. Maybe, I, maybe I didn't invite I thought I had him in the people. I promised him we'd do a painting hangout too, but I haven't delivered. I feel bad. Maybe, maybe he'll pop in here. Yeah, he's uh, he's a talented painter. I can't believe he does. Yeah, I've hung out with him a few times. Yeah, he's nice. Hey, did you get Thomas? Did you get one of these? One of these what? Thank you, froze. Ah, I I didn't hear you, Trey. Did we lose Trey? There we go. Hey, Daniel. Hey, everyone. How are you? Good. What's going on? Hi, bro. Uh, oh, look at all these familiar faces. Good to see you all. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Yeah. I think, uh, Trey, are you still there? I think we lost Trey. Yeah. Shoot. Maybe he'll be back. There's some... Oh, there he's gone, yeah. We figured out he's frozen anyways. <laughs> How you doing, Billy? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Doing well. We're just about to watch some Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Uh, you know, speaking of the Lord of the Rings, I think I'm going to mix myself up a drink. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Any excuse for a drink? <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Helen and Billy... Uh, Olav, I want to introduce you to a great friend of mine, Ivana. She says this would be her first Google Hangout, and what a great group of people for her to meet. Hi, Ivana. Hi. Hello, Ivana. Hi. How are you guys? Yeah, excellent. We're great. We're good. So, um, where are all of you located? I'm in, in uh, California. Ontario. Ontario, Queens? California, and Queens? Greece, Greece. Greece. Oh, wow. So how often do you do uh, do you do hangouts? Multiple times a day for me. <laughs> <laughs> as much as possible. Yeah, I usually usually once every other day, something like that. Is it um, addicting? So I think I am addicted. Yeah. <laughs> well, what makes you addicted to it? I don't know. I just like seeing interesting people and talking and hearing new things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You you get to put voices and faces behind the uh, people that you interact with on Google a lot. So it just makes it more personal. So when you talk to somebody online, it's somebody you've talked to almost face-to-face, -face, like if you Skype with them or whatever, the you know, same kind of thing. Um, and you just meet a lot of new people the same way, too. I like how conversations go on tangents. Right. And you can get any sort of subject yeah. just popping around. 
Huh. Yeah, they never get off track, Helen. Yeah. Never. <laughs> You're back in business. All right. So, uh, what's going on here? Daniel, you have a friend there? Yeah, I was just introducing Nirvana to all of you. She is new to Google Hangouts here, trying to introduce more wonderful people to this community. Oh, nice. Why did I have the camera stuck on me? Oh, because I was staring at my screen. Right. Oh, yeah, you got to take that off. I'm trying to get That's some of uh, my friends... Yeah. I'm trying to get some of my friends to join over the Christmas break. You should, Billy. I want to meet some of them. So, so Daniel, what was your friend's name again? I'm sorry, is it Nirvana? Uh, it's Avana. It starts with an A. Avana. It's all, all A's. Yeah. Avana. Got it. Yeah. Nice. And, Avana, this is Thomas Hawk. Oh, hi, Thomas. Hi. Where are you? Uh, I am in right now uh, Oakland. Oakland. And I've got a very full uh, cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> I see. What? There we go. It's just that's okay, that's good. We didn't want to crash your photo party, but um, thanks for, an invite, for inviting an artist in. Oh, absolutely. No, it's uh, always good to have an artist in. <laughs> so uh, what are you guys working on today? You 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 mean me or yeah Daniel you and Ivana what are you guys up to oh well we just got back from dinner and we're probably gonna watch a movie but I need to do some painting tonight before bed how many hours a day do you paint probably uh, an average of two or three but mm -hmm. in the summertime when I'm freer it's more more like six or seven oh nice. Yeah. That's great. And how many uh, paintings will you produce a week? Boy, um, you know, finished stuff that I would send to galleries, maybe maybe one a week. One but, a week. Yeah, but the rest are, you know, things for just sketches and ideas mm -hmm. and studies and um, just fun stuff. Yeah, <laughs> right. And then maybe one... Piece of week now. Do you do you have a favorite size to paint? Recently, I've loved uh, two foot by two foot square paintings. They're just really fun to deal with the square composition, and it's a just a different kind of design challenge. Mm -hmm. oh, I love the square. I'm a huge with photography. I'm a huge fan of the square. It's become my I think my favorite crop to use. I totally feel you. I think it's it never gets old. Yeah. I, I want to do a bunch of squares. I have this idea. Well, I got this printer, this, not this great printer. It's the Epson R9800, I think. Hmm. Uh, Postscript 9800, some personal something or other. I don't know what it is. But it's, but it's a very large format printer. I can print up to 44 inches. Oh, my gosh. So I made a print 44 inches by 44 inches <laughs> uh, the other day, a big square print. Which, it turns out, they're quite expensive to, like, frame a print like that. <laughs> yeah. Turns out it's like $800 a frame. <laughs> it'd, be but, cheaper to, it'd be cheaper to buy the tools and just start learning and figure out how to frame it and make your own frames at that point. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe I should figure out some other way to, like, mount it on a board or do something different with it. Maybe not frame it. But Yeah. But I have this, I have this idea that I uh, wanted to do someday. And it's kind of crazy, but I wanted to do, and it's based on square photographs, I wanted to make, I wanted to get a huge gallery space, like a giant, like, you know, uh, 100 feet by 100 feet space, uh -huh. giant, with high ceilings, and what I wanted to do is I wanted to take, because I take so many photographs, and I have so many of them, I wanted to print out I was thinking of doing it with neon signs, but like square photographs, 12 inches by 12 inches of neon signs. Wow, and, yeah. And get thousands of them put together and then frame them in like little 12 by 12 inch frames with very, very thin, like very thin black frames and then cover every inch of the wall, mm -hmm. every inch of the floor, <coughs> every inch of the ceiling with these prints. 
So you walk into this room, and there's a door that closes behind you, which also is covered in prints. And you're literally all you can see any place you look. There's no escaping it. <clears throat> it's just prints, like engulfing you. And then you don't have some lighting, so maybe some lights coming from the ceiling that would illuminate the entire room, like as this box. And you're sitting in this box, just looking. It'd be an experience, I think. That's a, a salon style to the extreme, is, is really <laughs> what it is. It would be crazy. Yeah, it'd be incredibly extreme. That's like our, our long term is our house is our house is going to be more or less like that. Just every square inch of wall is just going to be photographs. That's amazing. And then just clustered by themes or colors, color groups. You know, yeah. whatever kind of works together. This part and that part, and just kind of every square inch and just be everywhere you look, you can't escape. There's photographs. Right. Always something to look at. The other idea I thought that you could do with that is you could also do it with like LCD displays, but mm -hmm. it'd be hard to do a big enough space. But the cool thing about that would be if you've got a bunch of, I was actually thinking, well, oh, this would probably cost too much money, but uh, it, like to do something like with even iPads. iPads. Like, have, like if you, to imagine if you could, I mean, and again, all this stuff is pie in the sky stuff because it'd be way yeah. too expensive to do. But what if you could like take iPads and cover an entire floor, wall, ceiling, everything with iPads. And then have them rotate through, like, slideshow. So, like, at one point it would be all, um, you know, it would be all sort of uh, photographs of neon signs or right. photographs of toys or photographs of the color green or photographs of cemeteries. Or and it would, every single screen would be cycling through a different... You know, if you got um, large, large size LCD screens, and then just hook them up to a computer, you could uh, just do tiles. You know, like three by four tiles on each screen. That could be another way to do it. And that would be it would be certainly be more cost effective to get the same to get a similar effect. And you could probably even set it up where it would do the tiles could rotate within within each within each display. Yeah. And you could do like the colors, you know, the screens all changing synced across the room. So it starts on one side and then it just moves across the room to the other side. And then all of a sudden you've got an entirely new experience. You know, as, as similar as the two ideas are, the digital presentation versus the print presentation are radically different. I yeah. think that would be the most interesting thing is to be to sort of talk about why you would choose one over the other. Yeah. Cost or no issue, you know. Well, I think I think the print the idea with print would be that I think it would actually look better. Yeah. Well, he's so, got yeah. more engagement, you know. But I think the idea with that I like with like video and display is that it would uh, you could change it so you can right. have so many different shows with no cost. I mean, there's no reprinting. It's just. Oh uh, yeah, that's a great call. Change it on the printer. It change it on the computer. You know. So now you're going to do. So you, for one week you have cemetery shots, for the next week you have photographs of taxi cabs, and so every single, you know, so you walk into this room and everywhere you look there's no escaping them, taxi cabs everywhere. <laughs> that would be awesome. Wouldn't it? I mean, yeah. you, you had like thousands of photographs of taxi cabs like just going through, you know, or sunsets, you know, you just walk in, the sun is setting everywhere. And then I had this other idea... And I still might do this project, but I don't know. So I've got this thing going on that I do these things called $2 portraits. So anytime anybody asks me for money, I say, uh, I've got, I'm doing this project, $2 portraits, and I'll, I'll give you $2 for your portrait. And they almost always say yes, and I take a picture of them, and I get a story, and I make a little post out of it. But I was thinking of expanding the idea to include also $5 portraits and $7 portraits. So here's how that would work. It would be, okay, $2 for your portrait, $5 for a living portrait. And what I would have them do is I would have them, I would videotape them, because I have video on my Canon 5D Mark II. I'd set up a tripod and I'd videotape them for like three minutes. And I would tell them to hold as still as they possibly could. Mm -hmm. And if they want to do that and the $2 portrait, that could be a $7 portrait. Uh, and then I would take these videos, these like three minute videos, and I would do them all basically the same size. And I, I'd also like to do them in black and white, I think. 
and then to collect these videos, these like three minute videos, and do the same sort of thing and create like a room, you know, and the more you the more you get of them, the bigger the plasma displays, the you know, the more space you could cover. And I think it'd be great to cover a lot of space. And then on each of the video displays have one of these videos running of these people. That would be so cool. And the, and the idea behind it, the message would be, by having it on the floor, on the ceiling, on the wall, with no place you couldn't look, it would be forcing people that came to the exhibit to confront basically poverty in America. Mm -hmm. You know, it would force them to confront it. There's no way that you can't look away, you can't avoid. And because these videos would be like, look like photographs, but you would catch like slight movements, because somebody can't say, sit still, some people might even move more than others. I think putting them all together would have sort of this unnerving feel. Oh, I think it would be so. That would be amazing. Wouldn't that be a great project? Like you're being stared at. You're, you're being stared at by all these people. By all these people. All these like eyes are staring at you. Yeah. And they're like demanding that you confront poverty, that you confront social inequality, that you confront by being a part of this exhibit. And there's like, it's not like you could look at one and then look away. I mean, everywhere you look, you're looking into somebody's eyes. Oh, Thomas, you got to do it. I would like, but you know, something that, Daniel, the problem with that is... You should get this to happen, like, in other countries, too. Sure, it can happen in I mean, any countries, but I mean, I'm an American photographer, so I was thinking... Yeah, but I mean, I mean, you could sort of, you could sort of make a project and get other people to, to contribute from other countries. Yeah, you, could, you, could do you could do it. Well, one of the nice things is if, if I did this project, which, I, which it is a project I'm thinking of and I might want to do it. If I did this project, you know, like already my $2 portrait project has kind of spawned repeats of that. There's a group mm -hmm. on Flickr now how many, for the $2. How many of those do you have? I've got probably, I don't know, 120, 130. Well. So, um, here, I'll show some of them to you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's, well, it's, you know, something similar to what people kind of do to begin with. Just, you know, I, I've known a few photographers that have done that over the years. It's like, well, I'll give you some, I'll give you a dollar if you, you know, let me take your picture or just tip for a picture and I'll give you some money kind of thing. But doing it in but not as, as in a structured way. And that's, that's the big difference, I think. Well, have you guys ever seen, like, Andy Warhol's screen tests? Yes. That's kind of the idea, you know, get somebody to sit still and film them. Right. Uh, now, the portraits themselves are not as powerful, though, because I think people aren't, like, fidgeting and moving and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted to do video for that. And I wanted to do, uh, let's see, uh, here we go. These are my, um, it's working. So these, are, these are my $2 portraits that I've done. So these are just people that have asked me for money for $2 and then I just take their portrait, you know? But to do it on video, to do it on video where people are, you know, they can't look away, they can't, and the people feel like they're more alive, they feel like they're more engaged, like they're real people that are looking at you. Mm -hmm. the, the problem with it is, though, is that it would be quite expensive to do. I mean, it would cost, uh, you know, a lot of money. Not the display, but once you have the... Once you have the, the pieces, you could probably get the, some grant money together or something to actually do the installation. See, I don't know if you could. It, it, cost a lot it cost a lot of money before the installation, just getting the images as well. Well, yeah. I don't think, it, yeah, I mean, I think, I think you know, ideally... You'd I, need a lot. You'd want to get a thousand of them. A right. thousand yeah. people. Which so you that's 5,000 right there. <laughs> yeah. That's 5,000. That's a I, I could fund that part of it. Yeah, but, you know, that doesn't have to be, you know, that can be a two-year project or... Oh, it would have to be longer than two years. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, you know, over over a couple of years just to really... And it, it both 
runs the you know spreads the cost out, and plus you can make sure you get the the, the faces and the images that you really want to put together. Thomas, do you get model releases for these? None, no. 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 Yeah, I okay. think I remember you, you saying this. No. Because, you know, because I'm not going to sell them, like, I'm not going to do anything like stock photography. I mean, it's it would be considered fine art, so, you know, I wouldn't have to have a model release if I wanted to make prints and do stuff. Right. Even if I ever did anything at all commercially with these photographs, if I ever did, I wouldn't want any of the money, you know? Yeah. Like, that's not the point of this project. Yeah. Uh, I would like want to donate the money to some sort of like homeless advocacy group or something like that. Right. I, would, I wouldn't want to make any money off. off. I would. I would. I never want. I would never want to make any money off these portraits. I'm, I'm happy to make money off my photography, but that's not my point with these. My point with these is something different entirely. Mm hmm. More about making people think about the world around them a little bit more and the people that inhabit the world around them. Well, for me, you know, the, the, the basic of it for me is um, when I first came to San Francisco, I would, uh, you know, I would, people would ask me for money and I would give them money. And that's kind of like what I did in college, you know. In, in, uh, in college, people would uh, ask me for money and I'd be, okay, sure, no problem. Right. And I'd give them, you know, give them a buck or some spare change or... You know, whatever. And in San Francisco, I started doing that, but then it just got. There's a lot of people in San Francisco, as you know, uh -huh. off. And uh, and I just kind of got tired of it after a while, you know. And I had also like some bad experiences. Like I gave this one guy money one time, and he like he had like a vodka bottle, and he threw it on the ground and shattered it, and it almost cut me. And you know, it's kind of like you know, you have some people be really. So I just kind of after a while, I stopped engaging people at all. I just like would avoid them. I wouldn't even respond. Yeah. And I said, you know, what I really want to do is I want human interaction should be a positive thing, you know. It should be, you know, I shouldn't avoid these people on the street. I mean, I'm out shooting the street. I'm trying to shoot the city of San Francisco or the city of Memphis or wherever I'm at. Yeah. And that's a part of it. That's the part of the, that's a part of life in America. Uh-huh. And I need to document that, and I need to engage. I need to engage these people as human beings. And yeah. Respectful. And so that's when I came up with the idea of the project, and I thought, you know, mm -hmm. I'll turn it into something that instead of something that I avoid, I'll turn it into something that. Uh, it's not that I'm happy to run into somebody to ask me for money, but it's certainly not a negative anymore. And it's an interesting portrait, and I get something interesting out of it to share. Yeah. A portrait and a project I get to work on, and they get they get two dollars out of it. I mean, it's not a lot of money; it's not any meaningful money, but and it's something to put in their belly, or you know, or drink, or shoot up, or whatever. Whatever, but, yeah. You know, that's not really, you know. I, I decided not to care about all that. You know, what they do with the money. You know, it's 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 yeah. It's it's an interaction. It's a social interaction, and uh, but I think video video of that would be interesting. I think, and you then you could do something like this, but. I think the expensive part would be all the plasmas and the space, getting yeah. space and the plasmas to do it. But I don't know. Maybe you could get a grant or something. I don't know. Well, that's the thing is that, um, you know, you you work with somebody like, you know, you you get you get some of your at least the bulk of your videos together, and you go to talk to somebody like Samsung, or right. one of those guys that have, you know, they they do this kind of stuff. Where they'll set up just displays in airports or you know wherever, right? You know, and you you pick a venue that's coming up like a an expo or a a thing where you can present it and at least do an initial installation, and then if there's a lot of if it, if it catches, then then it can be moved to you know you know the 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 world tour kind of if you will or the U.S. tour of it if it really works right. Yeah, it could, it could. It could work. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know. Because a lot of those big companies do that kind of, you know, they, they, they do a certain amount of endowment to arts and things. Right. You know, the human sort of aspect of art, a lot of the stuff that I've seen anyways. Yeah, it would be something to do. 
you know, you talk to Intel for, you know, the computer hardware and the, you know, like I said, Samsung or whoever for the, for the maybe video I'll, hardware and... Maybe I'll start doing, maybe I'll start doing that with $2 portraits. Maybe I'll start doing $5 portraits in, and $2. I feel like it should be more than just a still portrait if you take a video of it, you know? No, that's, yeah. You should pay them more. I don't know why I feel that way. You know what would almost be interesting is just have them rotate. Just have them, you know, put the camera on them and just kind of have them spin around in a circle. That and could then be you, an interesting twist. Yeah, and then well, you get... But I like the idea, I like the idea of it almost feeling when you walk into the show that, that these are prints. Idea. That these right. are prints. These are like static photographs. But like Warhol screen tests, when he would take these pictures, and people would just sit there like right. that, you know, it almost looked like this is a picture. Right. You know, and people would occasionally would they would be like, oh, yeah, they'd get flustered or they would you know twitch. Yeah. Or, and I think you know I would in fact tell them to try to stay as still as they possibly could. Which is going to make a move, but. <laughs> which, which will, and also, though, if you think about the people out on the street, you know, some of them have problems and other things, so, I mean, it, it would be like a, it'd be interesting to see how they respond to that request not to move, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's an incredibly personal request to somebody, actually. Right. Um. I think you're right about the fact that the video would be more impactful, and it would be profound because... Um, for the content that you're trying to get at, where um, you know they look at it, at it as though it were a portrait, but then all of a sudden the context slip, slips just just barely, right? And, right? and now it's not a picture. Oh, wait, that that just moved, and then the encounter that you're seeking really happens at that very moment, where this now isn't me at a photo exhibit. This is me. And when that when that par when that slippage happens, then the whole context is re-envisioned, and it's for that one brief moment that you have that encounter that we seek, right? Right. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, that's what the insight is. I I think your idea is brilliant. I, I'd love to see if you do it. Yeah, I'd like to do it. I think I'm gonna start. I think I'm gonna start collecting those portraits, those those living portraits. Yeah. At least to start, you know, maybe it, maybe nothing ever happens with it, but why not, you know? You know, even if you just got you know, nine or twelve of them together and put them up in one... Well, that, I don't think that would... You know, just, just to look at it and see the effect on yourself. Right. You know. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the idea with it, I get what you're saying, and that would be interesting to see what that felt like. But I think for me, a, a huge part of this would be... The scale. Not just the scale. It's, it would just be the idea that you could put people in a room where there was no possible way to look away. Right. Where you could, unless you closed your eyes, you physically had to confront yeah. these eyes everywhere. The eyes, mostly. Yeah. But you had to see, you could, so I, I think there's something when you look at somebody's eyes, even like a picture, right. a still photograph, another human being, that there's a, there's an emotion there. There's an emotional, <laughs> not connection, it's a, it's a, you know, it's, it's, it, it creates an emotion, I think. I think it's difficult for us to look at people's yeah. eyes and have some sort of thought or feeling. And I think the natural tendency no, I, with poverty yeah. is to look away. Right. I just had a thought. Um, what you really want to do to do this is you want it inside of a dome of some sort. A dome. That's interesting. Because why a dome? Because you want to eliminate the corners, and so you've just got a solid surface basically that wraps. Now, why eliminate the corners though? Because I mean, you because the corners are a piece of visual interest that. But if you looked into a corner, you would still see, you know, one, two, three. But you still focus on the corners a little bit, you know, and the, yeah, the, yeah. the corners are going to distract from the faces some. It would be cool to do it in some sort of complete circle, like a ball, you know? Yeah. Like if you walked into the ball. That would require that would require a, a special room. I was thinking something more domish would give you... Yeah. You'd have the floor, but you'd have some walls and the curved ceiling so that you wouldn't... And then you could even do an Oculus for lighting or something. 
So the other idea I had with this, and again, this is all completely pie in the sky, by the way. This right. Not, oh, yeah. You know, this is just, I think about these things sometimes. The other idea that I had was when you go in, that only one person would be allowed in the room at a time. Hmm. Yeah. Because, see, the other thing you could do is if you looked away and there was another human being in there, you could look at the other human being. Right, somebody that you know, a familiar face. and Right. And so that gives, that detracts from the mission of the project. Yeah. Although, I mean, that's such a, a, it's such a constraint to put on an art installation, you know? But the idea that, you know, one person would go in, they could stay in however they, long they wanted, and then they would have to go out, and then the next person could go in. Right. But each person would be, it'd be a, I think also in isolation, you would have a more meaningful experience. You'd be, you'd focus more on the art and less on the distraction of another person in the room. You know, the, the, the downside of that is I don't think that most people are brave enough to do that. You don't think people would be brave enough to go into a room by themselves and look at that? No, I don't think they, no. Because people have a hard enough time looking at themselves. Right. You know, and that you know, looking at other people in that sort of immersive environment without a safety net, particularly, right. would really, I mean, it'd be really powerful, but it would, could almost almost be overwhelming. But that's what you want to do with the art, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. But I'm just saying that I don't think that people, a lot of people are brave enough to do that. I would have a hard time doing it. Yeah. I'd love to go into that and see what it feels like. Yeah, I would love to go into I'd, some... I'd love to, to discover what how I'd yeah. react. That. I'm just saying I'd have to I'd have to work myself up to it. I agree. No, because no, it's I'd far to... more. It would be a more intense experience. Yeah. Well, I think logistically, it would be difficult though, because you know, what if some guy like goes in there for like two hours and then nobody else can get in? You know, I suppose you. Yeah, can it can't be for however long they want. Yeah. Right. But then on the other hand, for someone to spend two hours in that sort of an immersive environment. What kind of impact might that make on them, on their, on their life, on their... On their psyche. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, and that's the point, I think, kind of. If you can change the way that people think mm -hmm. with art, you know, that people could be in that experience. Anyways, enough about that. That's all pie in the skin stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so. Here, Daniel. Good night, you guys. I wish I could stay longer tonight. All right, Daniel. Hey, no problem, man. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Good yeah. night. Thank you, Thomas. Good night. Yep. Take care, man. You too. Good night. Mm. Oh. So. Thomas, have you ever looked at the salon style stuff, the, the salon style hangings like that? No, but it, what is that? What are those? Um, uh, one example I can think of is the Crocker Art Museum up here. Um, they have a, it's a, it's just a large room. Very, this one, theirs has very high walls, um, and it's just literally wall to wall art. They just, this, you know, the frames are oftentimes half an inch apart and just one to the other, and they're grouped just mostly based on subjects hmm. or sometimes on art, on, on an artist. Where, where is this? This is where? It, uh, in Marin? Here in Sacramento, the Crocker Art Museum. The Crocker Art Museum. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Do you have a lot of photography? You know, I have not had a chance to go in there and try, but I, I could find out real quick. You know, I've kind of got this other, like, I think Billy and I are a little bit alike in that we're both a little obsessive and compulsive. Yeah. I've got this thing where I want to take pictures yeah. of every painting I ever see. Right. I've got probably, no. I don't know, 10,000 photographs of paintings now. Actually, I do know that they allow, or they do, they did used to allow photographs, at least I haven't looked recently, but, um, yeah, you know, they, they just reopened like an entirely new wing, so things may have changed around. But no, I've taken, I've taken pictures in there before. Um, I'll have to check that out the next time I come yeah. to Sacramento. As a matter of fact, they have one of those uh, little Artemat things. I don't know if you've ever seen those down in there. I took a picture of that. Okay. I haven't seen that. What is what is that? This Automat? It's an Artomat, and it's it's an old cigarette machine. Yeah. 
and particularly local artists will, you have like a box size, it's the size of a cigarette box, and you can put whatever kind of art you want inside this box, and it's sold for five dollars. The artist gets two fifty. Right, so the artist gets half, and then the company that runs these machines get half, and it's just kind of this little tiny bits of accessible art. It's just wow, that's interesting. Yeah, it's just a really neat little project. I've seen them in a couple places. Do you get to do you get to see what you're buying before you choose? No. But it's there's a picture of the name of the artist, probably, right? And so you might have an idea. Like, I huh. know I was right. It's $5 for the art? Yeah. Yeah. And a cigarette machine. That's interesting. I like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kat's going to grab the thing she got. I don't know what happened to the thing I got. It was something really random. Because I just pulled a random button. And I love this. Mm. Yeah. So. Uh -oh. Yeah. Mm. So. So what is that's a drawing on what? On a piece it's of wood? On a block of wood. Yeah, it's on plywood. Oops. It's a piece of plywood. It's a yeah. painting. Yeah. And then on the back, well it's backwards, but um <laughs> it has the <laughs> artist. Kelly Moy, two thousand four. Um Isn't that interesting? And I just think it's so cute. And everyone is different. Right. Yeah. 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 Because they're all, you know, they're all just Handmade little things, typically, you know. I like that. There's an exhibit at, at the uh, San Francisco airport of a guy that took these little two by two inch wood blocks uh -huh. and made like spent like on the subway going back and forth like years like making each little one and then put them all together in a giant collage. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's good. that sounds pretty wild. Man, that drink went down quick. Good night, Helen. Good night. Nice seeing you, Helen. See you, Helen. Bye, bye. Yeah. See you. <laughs> so, Billy, what have you been shooting lately? Uh, I've been doing a series. Uh, that I just finished, and uh, you know, I'm playing on like shooting like images in series for at least a while now. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have like a theme or something, and I try and make a story out of it. Try to connect images together. Yeah, that's cool. And and I just uh, finished uh, one, and I I called it the the dark series. The Dark series. Yeah. I like that. And the last series I did was a couple of weeks ago, or last week, I guess, I did the whole tomato thing. I don't know if you saw those or not. Yeah, tomatoes are great. Yeah. And we just got a can of tomatoes and had just... Remember that Giada de Laurentiis picture photo from Vanity Fair or Vogue or something a couple years back? What was it about? Uh, it was where she was holding tomatoes and she had a white dress on and there was like a field of tomatoes across the bottom of the, the shot. I didn't see that. It, it's an older one. Um, anyways, it was just, I kind of took the idea and just kind of ran with it to the extreme. Huh. Got some cool stuff out of it. It was kind of fun. I'm not allowed to do it again because Kat didn't like, didn't like having to take a shower after a photo shoot. <laughs> So far my Google happened. Plus is going to crash, and I'll be back in like a minute. Okay. Why is your Google Plus going to crash, Billy? Why do you think? I think you froze it. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. So far, we've ruled out. Uh, I'm not allowed to use tomatoes, and I'm not allowed to use uh, glow sticks anymore for photo photography. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Not he's talking about broken up glow sticks. Yeah. The stuff inside the glow sticks. Yeah. That's what I have a problem with. Glow sticks. Uh, <laughs> why don't you like that stuff? It takes about eight washings to wash off. <laughs> yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like some work. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's it was a lot oilier than I expected it to be, really. But 
Now, what made you decide to use that stuff? Is it toxic or anything? It's no, not no, 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 no. It's um, but uh, I just wanted to do like a. I kind of wanted to see how it would work with some long exposures and just kind of messing around with just making the human form glow. And yeah. You need the source of light. Right. You know. Right. Rather than the light on the subject, the subject giving off the light, and it's. That sounds great. It was pretty cool. And I, in my defense, I have to say, I didn't say I wouldn't do these things again. <laughs> I just said he had to have a damn good reason. <laughs> now there is that. Well, art is kind of a pretty good reason. It'd have to be some damn good art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. <laughs> Let me see if I can bring no up one of No cheap the, art for me, then. Right. Yeah, I think I've got one of those somewhere. My laptop is being really slow today. Oops. For some reason or another. Hmm. I did one of those. It decided it, um, when we went down to the bay, I brought it with me so that I could uh, start uh, editing photos in the drive back. And uh, he's hardcore like that. <laughs> right. You know, and there's nothing like, you know, editing photos in the car, right? Um and it just didn't even go to sleep, it just shut itself down. It just the battery just ran out. Which I've never had happen before, but uh huh. I actually I still have not figured out how to Share an actual photo from an album. Man, I don't know. I don't use that. I don't use albums at all. No, you don't? No. Yeah, just post uh, photos to post? Yeah, you know, I, I, if I put it in an album, then it double posts it. Oh, yeah. Um, well, it should just share the album. Right. But, um, you know, and just have that one be the cover. At least that's how it used to work. I think that's changed recently. Well, I, I, find, that, I find that if I put something in an album, well, I post it directly to Google+. Plus, right. And then if I want to put it to an album, I either have to move it or copy it. Right. If I copy it and it goes in the new album, then if somebody puts a comment on it, like on Picasso, it generates a new photo in Google+. Yes. Um, what I'll typically do, like if I'm doing a series, or like when I uploaded the Death Valley photos, right? Um, I started an album and I shared, posted one picture to it. And then as I edited it and, up and finished photos, I would just upload it to the album, and it would reshare the album with that photo as the top, as the cover photo. Every time, though? Yeah. You don't have to share it each time, but if you want to just share that photo and have it linked back to the album, if you do it that way, uh -huh. it maintains the continuity. But you have to do it from the get-go. You can't do it after the fact. Matt, what's going on? Looks like Matt's joining us. <clears throat> yeah. Here's the one I was talking about. I think this should come up. Now, when you say, here's the one, can you screen share right now? Um, actually, I should be able to do that. I just I just popped the link in the chat bar, sorry. Um, let me see. Um, okay. I don't see an option for screen sharing. I don't no, think I'm... I don't think you can, actually, but... So, I'm pulling the picture up, though. <clears throat> So that's pretty cool, that light painting. Here, I'll share this. I think how it works with these Hangouts, uh, the, the, uh, <coughs> I think how it looks with, how it works with these um, on-air Hangouts is that only yeah. I, or only people that have on-air Hangout privileges can show. Yeah, that, I think that I suspect that's the case. Just like we can't invite others, like you can in an extended, in a standard, mm -hmm. even extended hangout. 
So that's interesting. So you're using the glow stick to light her up here? No, actually, no. Oh. This one I used uh, fruit roll-ups. For the gel. Yeah, I used fruit roll-ups as a gel. So this, this you're that's using the stuff from the glow yeah. stick. So and then there's another one that's a couple of photos down. So wait, Kat, you what did you smear this just all over your body? Pretty much. Well, yeah. He did the smearing, but yeah. Yeah. Huh. Any place that's not sensitive, you know, <laughs> just to, just to be safe. Right. Because you know they say it's it's not. Uh, I like this one. That's great. I, that's my favorite. That's beautiful. <laughs> I know I didn't take it, but I'm <laughs> for it, so I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. This was, uh, you know, uh, Samir and uh, Tamara Prusner. Yeah, right. They do those uh, photography death matches. Right. These are the ones that, uh, that I took for that. So these were all taken within a week. That's pretty cool. That's those light ropes you can buy at the hardware store. And that's the other one with the... Ah, uh, so, so you basically, you just rubbed it all over her body, huh? Right, and then just made her stand real still and go for the... And there's the aftermath. Wow, that's cool. Those are fun to play with. Yep. So those things, that can't hurt you, that stuff, right? Right, you know, I would, I would recommend if somebody were going were gonna to try it, just because it's a chemical, to do a test patch on their skin somewhere. Right. Uh, like on the back of their hand or someplace that's a little bit sensitive but isn't going to really, you know, be a, an issue. And then, uh, you know, and then just let that sit there for, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes. Right. Yeah, you know, just to make sure that you're not going to have a, a reaction or something. And yeah, that one is also uh, the, those, just those hardware light ropes. Yeah, I love those. Those are great. You know, they had some of those at the uh, Atomic Inn in uh, the Valley. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, no, I saw th there was all kinds of stuff. Um, I did do some of the, you know, the Jarvie window ring there. Billy, let's look at some of your photos. Okay. I have a new album up called uh, The Dark Series. So this is from The Dark Series right here. Oh, cool. That is cool. How long did you work on that photo, Billy? I, I can't see it on the screen share right now. Oh, you oh there, there it is. Yeah, I see it now. I see it now. It just, for some reason, wasn't loading for a moment. Um, that one took me about s six and a half hours. Wow! And what did you? What, what are some of the things you did on this photo? Uh, it, it's a composite. Like I had to shoot that in my basement. I, I set yeah. up the lighting and I did the pose and all that. And then I had to select an image for the background. And I kind of had some images in mind for when I shot this and had the idea of this in my mind. And so I had to get get that, and I had to like uh, make the scene look the way I wanted it to, and I had to correct the perspective of the architecture a little tiny bit, and I touched up a lot of little details, and I increased contrast in a lot of the spots. I'm just very meticulous in the little details that made that took. A lot more time. Huh. That's great. Yeah, that's that's really cool. This is more from the dark series. Oops. Well, I don't want to that. <laughs> yeah, that's another one from it. Uh, right, you're going in reverse chronological order right now. Where should I start? So should I start with else? So I should probably, maybe I should go to the album, huh? Maybe yeah. I should go to the Dark Series. Here we go. There we go. Oh, so this is the first one. 
Right. It, it takes a moment for it to load right, right, right. on Can't the screen see. here. Yeah, that's the first one. Oh, wow. That's actually uh, taken in uh, ca in the secret tunnel f in at Castle Loma to go to the horse stables in Toronto. Oh wow! Cool. Hmm. What a great tunnel. Yeah. I like the grunge feel to it. That's really. Now, how long how long did you sit here for this? I mean, how long how what how long is this exposure? Well. When I was uh, at Castle Loma, I didn't like. I had a tripod with me, but I didn't have enough like time to set up the tripod and all that, because I was trying to fit in so many things into one day. When I was in Toronto, and when I, by the time I got to Castle Loma, I only had one hour before it closed, so I had to run through the whole place. Mm -hmm. And so this is how did you take the shot then? It's composite. I shot uh, myself in my basement, and I put it together oh, in wow. Photoshop. So you just took a picture handheld of this tunnel, and then you put yourself into it. Yeah. Jeez, no wonder I took... I Billy, no wonder so, I six hours to do one of these. Yeah. I took so many images in Toronto, I can use them as a library for, like, concepts uh, and that. Oh, cool. This is great. So, this, so, so, so you're not... This is a composite. You took this picture yeah. so you're close up with cells. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those, that's two separate images, and that that's another secret passage in the castle as well. That was in between the study and the wine cellar, I believe. Okay. Now, what's the significance of the money? Um, it 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 had to do with um, like the theme was kind of like. Uh, choosing a career in life and how money is important to many people and how money can become something of an obsession and you can become greedy with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that staircase. Wow. What a great yeah, staircase. A lot of these are in Castle Loma. Yeah. That staircase was hard to edit myself into. I can imagine. That one was probably the most difficult. Edit. Th this one with the throne, that was also mm -hmm. a difficult edit because I had to use three different images there. One for the the chair. The chair was actually wooden. It wasn't e it wasn't even gold colored or anything. I just <laughs> edited it. You made it make gold. it work. Right. Yeah. Cool. I like the, I like the, that that really narrow crop like that. Yeah. What are you holding in your hand there? Uh, money again. It's a it's a the other, the other the light in source. the other. Oh, in, in this one. In, in, yeah. Take that that that's supposed Basically. to be knife. Uh, the, the knife actually looked that way in the image. It's because I had the light reflecting off of it from what the right. flashes. And I thought it, it worked well, but it, I think to some people they might even think it's a wand or something because they're right. thinking Harry Potter. Well, yeah, well, it looks it looks like it, kind of some sort of a uh, like like almost like a uh, like it's glowing lightsaber. Yeah, not a lightsaber, but it's something sort of glowing. I think this is my favorite one, Billy, really, of the series. Yeah, that one's the only one that's not in Castle Loma, the one with the uh, glowing knife. Huh. That no, no, is actually I'm at the sorry, University of Toronto. Right. I'm, I'm behind. Not that one. This last one. The Dark Series. Oh, the, soon. That one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. Th that's the castle. Like, it takes a moment for, like, the thing to, to uh, yeah, like, know. change on my screen for some reason. Yeah, the, internet are, the internets are slow tonight, I think. I'm hardly... I'm not even getting notifications for anything or... Oh, is that right? Is Google Plus not working? Well, you know, if you <laughs> press the right button, it'll tell you you have notifications or something, you know, but you can't just glance and see what's going on. Right. Trey said I should oh, I use that last attention. image in my series. It's my profile picture. <laughs> I think it's good. It's, it's yeah. expressive. I like it. 
I, I do. I agree with Trey. I think that's a great image. Very impactful. Definitely. Hmm. I like that one. So I'm hoping to do another series tomorrow. I'm going to try and start one. What, what's, what series are you starting tomorrow? Um, I kind of want to keep it a surprise as to exactly what it's going to be on. Mm -hmm. Just so I don't have to like follow through on anything I say right now. <laughs> you know, sometimes like I begin with one idea in mind and it slightly changes as it goes along. Right. Just so it makes sense. Oh well, yeah, you know, I, I don't know, I do that a lot. I'll, I'll, I'll come up with an original idea and then once I start working into it, I realize where I really wanted to go with it. Oh yeah, that happens. You know, and sometimes it'll be a, a complete tangent from what I was originally going to shoot. Oh yeah. And usually I like, like what I came up with better, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh man, preacher brother. <laughs> hmm. Now, for some reason, uh, it's saying limited for this group, so people can't see it on the broadcast that hang out. I wonder why that is. Interesting. I think, I I, I think it is like the two like posts that, that came with your hangout there, like they got switched right. around. I think one still says public. Right. Yeah, says, is it still public though? Computers? There's one. There's one that people are commenting on. Huh. Let me see this. Let me try this. And that one's listed as public. You're 641. Plus.google.com. I'm still learning how this stuff works. So if I'm not logged in as myself, uh, let me try this. Let's see what it shows up to the public. I, I wish that they had like a way for you to see how many people are currently watching. Oh, so it wants me to sign in to see my public post. That's weird. Huh. Hmm. So these are my public posts. I guess you can't, in Google incognito mode, look at people's public posts. No, you know, I bet it, that it knew it was you, and it said, right. if you want to look at your stuff, log in. Well, but that's why I did it in incognito mode. I don't know. Maybe so it that it would know. not know it was me. Maybe you did know. Oh, you mean, <laughs> oh, you mean full incognito as far as, you know, the browser, right, silent mode, or, or, or private well, see, like, it's like weird, like if I take my stream, uh, let me try this again. Uh, let's see, let me try something here. See, if I make a public post, anybody should be able to see it. Oh yeah, right. so it should be, it's supposed to be indexed on Google proper, so. Right, it's weird, it's, it Chrome for whatever reason is not. Oh. Maybe I need to try uh, Safari. It might be the incognito mode or something. Yeah, it might be some crazy thing, huh? Yeah. I want to see what people that are not logged in can see. I'll try Safari and see what that does. No, if you post, like, this is weird. Like, like right here, this is like the link to my posts on Google+. Yeah. Uh, it's not working now. That's mm -hmm. right. Google chose that moment to ask me if I was still here. Yeah. Uh, right. I hate that. No, it just pops up a thing and you have to click a button. Otherwise, it will drop you out. My new series tomorrow should have a, a brighter feeling to it, in a, in a sense. A brighter atmosphere. Still mm. kind of probably a bit dark feeling, like it, it, but it will be more bright images. I wonder maybe, so do you see this link right here that I just put in the chat room? Yeah. yeah. 
that that's a link, I believe, to my photo stream. But if I click yeah. on it and I'm not logged in, it prompts me to log in instead. It is a link to your um to your main stream, yeah. But if I try oh wait, now that's weird. It just glitched. Okay, I see. So there is public. It is public. People can still see it. Got it. Okay. Oh, and there still are comments. Okay, so that, that's all still yeah. working. Yeah, I just um, I just tried the 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 post or the 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 one you linked, you know, the link to your uh, stream in incognito, and it came up fine. Oh, that's weird. I wonder. I wonder why it's not coming up for me. Okay, so now I found it. There were two posts for some reason. No. Uh, um, probably the one that was the uh, that was the the actual hangout, and then there was probably one that everybody else sees. Yeah. You know the re the, the broadcast link versus the the come hang out link. Right, 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 right. Okay, but I see now I can see all the comments. So Don McCaskill says, "Is there no way to see this full screen?" Right. Right, right. This is the first time I'm seeing that. So no, you can't see these full screen. That's a limitation. Yeah. It's something that would be nice if they if they fixed that. That would be, you know, being able to even for us just being able to to increase the video size some. Right. I think I think that's a big request that a lot of people have asked for. Yeah. I think the problem with that is that um, it probably just takes a lot of bandwidth, you know. Well, not if you not if you don't increase the the video quality. If you take the same, <laughs> you know, you take the same bit bit rate and just allow people to display the screen a little bit larger. You know, you you lose a little bit of quality, but you get the size. Right. Because I think the the quality of the screens right now are much smaller. You know, the the are much more than the size of the screens allow. Yeah. You know, um, when we were talking to uh, who were we talking to? They got the new. No, no. Um, the uh, what's her name? She does the underwater photography. Elena. Elena, yeah. And she was talking about her her band the bandwidth limitations because you know she's in the middle of the Caribbean. Right. Does she and have bandwidth limitations? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, she's got like two connections. One of them's satellite, and one of them's, I think, DSL or something like that. And the DSL is she's limited as far as how much bandwidth she can use in the DSL for a given day. I remember I, when I went to the Bahamas, uh, I could not upload photos to Flickr the entire time I was there because hmm. the bandwidth was just so slow. It would, like start, and we'd make it like through forty percent of the first picture, and then it would like throttle you or something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's gotten better, but it's still not it's still not there. Um, she was having she was having to to sign to be a satellite, and you know you've got that huge lag. Right. <clears throat> hmm, that's interesting. Okay, I think it's time for me to get some wine going now that I've finished my cocktail. <laughs> Never a bad thing. All right, I'll be right back. No, okay, okay. What else have you been working on, Billy? Just hanging out? Not much else. Hanging out a lot online. Yeah. Every day now. <laughs> Multiple times a day. <laughs> yeah, I know. I see you everywhere. <laughs> I see you everywhere. Are you just wandering to hang out sometimes, or? Yeah, I'd like to see new and interesting people. Yeah, I'll kind of try and do that. If I see like one person I know want to hang out, sometimes I'll just wander in there to see who else is in there and, and what's going on. And it's kind of fun. Just you never know who you're going to meet, and you know. I don't think I could ever do another public hangout though. That that just straight public because they fill up too fast, and then and people just kind of sit there and they don't talk all the whole night. <laughs> At least the, the ones that I've seen. Well, it depends. Like so I've had uh, one naked guy come on. 
No, uh, I can deal with that. It's just the people that sit there and they don't say a word and they just stare at you in the little tiny box and they're, you know, just eating up spots for people that could actually come and hang out and talk. I don't care if they're naked. That's not my problem. <laughs> you know, I can go click well, on the window and I, you know. I, I didn't really care. It's just other people are like, oh my god, I'm getting out of here. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is. It is kind of rude, but you know, if you confront people like that and just ignore, you know, and just ignore their nakedness completely, they tend to just stop yeah. because they're not getting the react. Because he got the reaction he was looking for. Yeah, and he probably went to another hangout immediately after that too. Exactly. <laughs> you know, he's, if you will, trolling with his penis. <laughs> So, you know, you just when you, you know when everybody runs away, they just validate them, and it's just you know, not. Uh, they don't need that kind of people around. I don't know. Hi there. Hi. What you guys doing? Hey, Sergey. Uh, we're waiting for uh, Thomas to come back with a glass of wine. I um, well, if we'd known you were coming, we would have had to bring you one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I think my camera is all yellow from the improper white balance, but oh. yeah, well. mm -hmm. you know. I'm usually green. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So uh, I saw your um, what's it called? Your series, Billy. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I've been following it all for the last few days. Thanks. Now, I keep missing it. I've been missing it when it posts, so I'm gonna have to go and look at them all now. Yeah, but it's kind of hard keeping up with all these great uh, photographers. Oh yeah. yeah, it's just. I mean, I I want to comment a lot more than I already do, but yeah, it's hard. All right, Serge, how's it going, man? Uh, not bad. Uh, I'm actually. Uh, I just came back from a, a night of uh, shooting in Toronto, some night shots and stuff like that. No nice. deal. Where'd heard, you go shoot? Uh, I mostly go shoot like around in the streets. Uh, Cars, buildings, people, kind of like that. I went around uh, the Chinatown. I really like all the signs and you know signs okay. and stuff like that. I, I just really like all the different color you can see at night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, neon signs. Once I I started doing night photography, I just couldn't go back to day. Just the, the <laughs> lack of color. <laughs> and it's kind of, yeah. yeah. yeah it, it's kind of. Do you know Tom's? Do you know Tom's in Toronto? Uh, sorry, who? Tom's Tom Rybo. Uh, no, I don't. I don't really know that many uh, of the people in the community, actually. So. He's a rooftopper. He does all those rooftops. Oh, in Toronto. That's awesome. Great stuff. I love yeah. visiting Toronto. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get access to a lot of places. You really have well, to know all that. Tom Tom's been on like, uh, I think he told me fifty roofs over forty stories. Oh wow! Oh. In Toronto. That's awesome. So he took us up on two roofs. One was like this 50-story like condominium building. Mm -hmm. We shot uh, cityscapes of Toronto from it. Mm -hmm. uh, here, I'll find a picture of that. And then the other one, we got up like really early on uh, to shoot the sunrise of this office building, this commercial office building that we had to go up the fire escape on. Mm -hmm. On uh, on a Sunday. Uh, let's see here. Tom, you ever been on top of the um, law school's roof? Wait, where? Hastings. Oh, I haven't been on, on top of Hastings. I know, I know where Hastings is. Is that a good route to get up on? I, I, perhaps it is if you're not terrified of heights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrified. <laughs> Are you? I'm, I'm a little bit terrified of heights. So, I don't know. I was just, I, I've been up there. I didn't enjoy it at all, no. But uh, it might be a great place to take pictures from. <laughs> you know, I, I, love, uh, I love shooting Toronto. Yeah. I've seen a lot of your stuff, actually. Uh, I was surprised how much you have from Toronto. You know, believe it or not, I was there. I was just there uh, for a weekend. Oh, wow! But I, but I shot like the entire time. Like mm -hmm. all I did was shoot. That's awesome. These are. Uh, let's see here. 
it's the same as what uh, how I was when I was in Toronto. Yeah. You oh, know, I actually, I I just live on the edge of Toronto right now, so I actually have to take a bus or whatever to uh, get downtown, and you know, so I'm not like right there where all the buildings and all the life is, but uh, I, I kind of have, uh, right. I kind of uh, try to make a point of going there every Friday or so. But, it's such a great place. Yeah. These are. Uh, let's see here if I can get this to work. These are my Toronto photos. Oh, yeah? Oh, I know where that one is. That's in the airport. I've shot that as right. well. Right. That is in the airport. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a similar shot somewhere where you try to isolate the right red cube. Yeah. Uh, it, it's funny how everybody always tries to take that shot. Hey, hey, how you doing? Hey there. But this, th that was from one of the roofs. I don't know, has it come up yet? I know there's a little bit of a delay. Oh, yeah, now there I see it. it. Yeah, yeah. The, roof, the roof shot. Oh, yeah. Cool. Tom took me up on top of these roofs in Toronto, and they were just great. Mm -hmm. But I've got, I published uh, 900 photographs of Toronto so far from that weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen a lot uh, of those on G Plus at all. Yeah, I posted a lot on Google Plus. I didn't realize it was that many. You <laughs> mean neither did I? <laughs> yeah, I've shot a lot. I shot, you know, I, that installation. I just couldn't get enough of that thing, you know. Oh, yeah. in the airport. Yeah, in the airport. Yeah, that one's fun. It's been there for a while now, I think. I went, we went to the Hearn Power Plant. You guys know that? Mm -mm. That was an old abandoned power plant. That was pretty mm -hmm. cool. I love Toronto. Toronto is such a great town. There's always more to find out and explore in that place, too. Oh, actually, now that I see that subway shot, they have new uh, subway trains now that you can walk from car to car. There's nothing like, there's no individual carriages now. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting, too, because when whenever there's a turn, you can, at first you see all the way down the train, but then when it turns, you could just see it curve. It just feels so weird. Oh, like there's a accordion bus. now? Uh, sorry? Are those in service now? Yeah, like I've actually, uh, do you live in Toronto by any chance, or? Uh, hour and a half away, Peterborough. Our, yeah, I've been on uh, them maybe once or twice. They're not in full, like, rotation, but they do have test runs where, you know, the public can still get off them. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, I love the architecture of Toronto. So much, so many great buildings. Yeah, I was actually, it's kind of funny because I never really considered buying a wide angle lens, but now just because of all the architecture I'm kind of seeing, yeah. really I'm kind of considering it, but I think as a beginner it's kind of difficult to realize when, like what you shouldn't buy. That's actually one of the things I wanted to ask Thomas Hawk a while back. What do you think is the most important thing not to buy in no. the beginning? Yeah, not, not to buy. buy. Oh, in the beginning? Yeah, like what do you regret buying, for example, long ago? I regret I regret buying my uh, 50 millimeter F1 II. <laughs> <laughs> it was very expensive, and yeah. it was uh, it was a lot of money, and it's yeah. not that much better than the one four, you know. Yeah, I have a one four on my D uh, 700 right now. This but building we... right here is by a guy, an architect by the name of Mies van der Rohe, hmm. and he does some wonderful stuff. He's one of my favorite modern architectures architects. <laughs> So that one of Tom, the silhouette, that was from that roof. Mm -hmm. Is was that in the Eaton Center? Uh, no, that was in City Hall, inside City Hall. Mm -hmm. The last one? This one is from the Eaton Center with Sarah there in the blue dress. No, that's not the Eaton Center. That's it's a Brookfield place. Right. Which one was the Eaton Center? That, uh, City Hall is where we shot up those stairs. This mm. building, City Hall. Yeah, that's City Hall. Yeah, that, yeah. that's the new City Hall. They have a giant Christmas tree up now. It's was pretty interesting. I got a shot of that as well. Mm. Oh, were you down for the lighting ceremony? Uh, no, I wasn't actually. I think I was there either the day before or the day after. I don't know. No. I, I did go down for that. and. Yeah. Got a few shots, not that great, but... Yeah, I saw lots of people taking shots, though. Yeah. 
Dave, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, Thomas. Hey there. So I watched, just there? finished watching uh, Moneyball. How is it? It's pretty good. I liked it. Now, what is Moneyball about? It's about baseball, right? Yeah, it's about uh, the general manager of the Oakland A's, I guess, in 2001, and he followed this whole philosophy of going by certain statistics rather than usual star qualities, and they almost made it to the playoffs, and I won't give away too much. Hmm. It's like a documentary? Uh, well, it's, it's a, I wouldn't say documentary because it's, you know, it's all actors and stuff, but... It's based on real-life events? Yeah, exactly. It's based on a true story. Uh, I should watch that. What are you guys doing? How's it going? Hanging out, having a little wine. <laughs> As usual. I'm going yeah. to actually have to bugger off and get some dinner and things going here, so... Nothing wrong with dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to make some kind of uh, chicken curry or something. Sounds good. All right. Yeah. So, all right, all good, good hanging out tonight. Definitely. Nice, nice meeting you, man. Nice hey. meeting you. You guys have a good night. We'll see you soon. Nice. See you. See you. Sure. So, Gary, what do you like to shoot? Uh, usually landscape, outdoor, although I'm trying to do more more different things. Usually just whenever I go uh, camping or vacation, that type of thing, I get little uh, scenic shots of the areas, that type of thing. So we've got three Canadians in this room now. Wow. <laughs> oh, we're, we're taking over. <laughs> Dave and I are definitely outnumbered in that. Well, I'm not Amer I'm not American either. You're, but you're in America. You're yeah, in America. yeah, yeah. We're too nice to take Ge over. Geographically, we're, uh, good. Yeah. I know this whole room is going to get overwhelmed with niceness now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to work. Say, everybody in Canada seemed when I was visiting Toronto super nice. People are just friendly. Is yeah, it true that maybe. the people in Montreal tend to be less friendly than the? Yes. Is that right? Why is that? A different attitude up there. Mm. It's a party town. Everybody yeah. likes drinking there. Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely every night's a party there. I'd yeah. like to shoot Vancouver. I hear Vancouver has a lot of great old vintage neon signs. Yeah, Vancouver probably would be awesome to shoot. Yeah. I, that's one of the ones I'm going to shoot at some point is Vancouver. I shot Toronto, and I want to shoot Vancouver, and I guess Montreal as well. Montreal's nice. You should go up to, like, Nova Scotia, too. There's probably some good good stuff up there. Yeah. Halifax and all along the coast. Yeah. Lots of nice spots. <laughs> yeah, my biggest problem is there's still so many American cities that I need to shoot. Mm-hmm. So I want to shoot uh, the 100 largest American cities, and I've still got 69 to go. You've only got, did you say 9 or 69? 69. Yeah. Oh. oh, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wish I had 9 to go. You going in any particular order, or like biggest to smallest? or? No, I'm trying to knock off some of the bigger ones. I've hit, I've hit uh, well, New York's the biggest, and then Los Angeles, so I've got both of those. Um... I've shot uh, then Chicago. I've shot Chicago. Then Phoenix I haven't shot. Or Phoenix or Houston? I can't remember which one's number four. Which one's bigger? Phoenix or Houston? I think it's Houston's number four. So, you know, I'm trying to knock off a lot of the big ones. i got to shoot Phoenix. They're, they're at the top of the list. Um, Philadelphia is near the top of the list. I need to shoot Philadelphia still. Maybe you should do the 50 biggest and the 50 smallest. That'd be cool. That would be interesting. You know, the 50 smallest uh, or the 100 smallest uh, towns in America. There are places that have, like, population one, you know? Yeah. Just an intersection. Right. So I don't know how interesting that would be. <laughs> you would really stand out there, though. <laughs> yeah, you would. Although I do like, I love shooting small towns. I love shooting all of, uh, I love shooting all of America, even the cities, but... I'm kind of focused on the cities. I'm going to go to Detroit next month. 
So Wait, so what's so what's number one hundred on the biggest? Uh I have to look. Let's see here. I'm actually more interested in like the hundred biggest cities in history in the United States. Like what was the largest in eighteen fifty and that mm, Detroit was one of the lar- was much larger than it was. Even in eighteen fifty it was actually ranking as one of the one hundred largest. <laughs> it wasn't very high though. It's like number sixty. Huh. I think, um, okay, let's see, hold on, I'll find it. I hate that I have to use Firefox whenever I use do one of these Hangouts. I hate Firefox. <laughs> have, you tried, have you tried Chromium? No, what is Chromium? Chromium is the open source version of Chrome. That's what Chrome's based on. Oh, is that right? They're almost identical, yeah. What's the, di- what, well, what's the difference? Why would you use that instead of Chrome? Well, in your situation, you like Chrome, so you... Oh, I see. So you could use Chromium. Oh, that's a good tip. Hmm. Huh. Chromium? Yep. Let's see. C-H-R. Chrome. Chromium. There you go. Are you using, uh, what's it called, Firefox just because of the, all the resources that are being taken away? From? Right. Well, what happens is when I'm doing a Hangout in Google Chrome, if I try to open like another window, it's just like completely... Right, right. Unresponsive. I think you guys talked about this yesterday. Yeah, Chi was saying it's a bug in the person who's broadcasting. Mm-hmm. So here's Chromium. Learn how to browse search Chromium OS? No. No. Chromium. I need the web browser, right? Yeah, let me see if I can. Build, build Chromium or Windows, debug and submit a patch. That's the Chromium project. I'm thinking of. Yes, if you go to if you go to chromium.org. Okay, I'm there. And then on the the big link on the left says Chromium. Okay, I click that. Now what do I click? Uh, How do I download it? Yeah, good question. So that would be like a second version of Chrome I could be running while I was doing the Hangout in the other version of Chrome. Yeah. I wouldn't. I, I'd be interested. You could probably run um, Chrome with a second profile too, and get a similar result. I don't know. You think? Because well, it's, well, because it, it is a separate executable anyway for every. Hmm. You're on a Mac, maybe, right? Maybe they'll fix it. Maybe. Well, he's, he, well, she said by around Tuesday they're hoping to have that fixed, right? Or was that some other bug? Uh, I, th- I thought he said that. I hate that. You, I hate that you can't just type on Firefox. You gotta type in the little search bar. You can't yeah. just type in the uh, you know. Firefox is such a lame browser. Wait, you can't type what? Well, you gotta type it in the little search bar instead of in the URL bar for searching things. No, I don't think so. I think that works the same way as it does in Chrome now. I don't think so. I think I mean, it does it. Maybe it so. depends on the version. Maybe. So. The 100 largest American city is Spokane, Washington. Ah. So I've shot, the t- of the top ones, New York's number one, Los Angeles is number two, uh, Chicago's number three, Houston's number four, so I've shot all of those. Philadelphia and Phoenix are five and six I have not shot. San Antonio seven I have not shot. I've shot number eight, San Diego. I've shot number nine, Dallas. I've shot ten, San Jose. I haven't shot 11 or 12, which is Jacksonville and Indianapolis. 13 is San Francisco. 14, Austin, I've shot. 15 is Columbus, Ohio. I haven't shot that. 16, Fort Worth, Texas, I shot that. Charlotte, North Carolina, I haven't shot. Detroit, I've shot. So I've shot a lot of them. I've shot maybe half of the top 20. In the top 20, I've shot Memphis, Detroit, Fort Worth, Austin, San Francisco, San Jose, Dallas, San Diego, Houston, Chicago. I've shot 12 of the largest 20. Then once you uh, get all of them done, by that time they'll change already, so you have to go back. They will, again. yeah. The census stuff will change, and so that's okay, because I think once I finish with the top 100, I want to do the next 100 anyways. Mm-hmm. 
So it's mostly just to kind of check them off your list. Yeah, I like to be goal oriented. I like to be focused on something. I like to have a project. Mm-hmm. And so it keeps me uh, moving, you know? It keeps me chugging away. But I found these cities, every city's got like really remarkable things to shoot. I posted a shot this morning of a bridge that connects uh, Tennessee and Arkansas over the Mississippi River. Um, stunning bridge, one of the you know one of the great bridges in America. And yet we've got here the Golden Gate and the Bay Bridge. I mean, so there's but there's just different perspectives everywhere you go. And the portraits in Memphis. Memphis has the most aggressive uh, panhandlers I've ever met. They're, <laughs> they're like crazy, and they're all. It's weird. They're all. Super, they're all black, and they're all men. Like other cities, it's like more mixed, and there's even some women every now and again, but in Memphis, it's all male, all black, asking you for money, and they're the hard, most hardcore panhandlers I've ever met. I mean, they will follow you around for like 10 minutes. Wow. But every city has its own little flair, its own little flavor. It's kind of funny. Uh, a lot of the times when I actually go to shoot down in the city or whatever, I actually don't take things like change with me. I just try to reduce weight however I can. So sometimes I actually generally, genuinely don't have something to give, even if I wanted to. Now, why do you want to reduce weight? I just don't like having a lot of things in my pockets. I don't like having a backpack if I can avoid it. Hmm. Just I've got a lot of weight when I shoot. I have a big, yeah. big huge backpack. Mm-hmm. But mostly I just don't like having a heavy wallet, I guess. All that metal change. <laughs> yeah, I don't like coins. I always, I always like hand them to my wife when I get Yeah, they, they seem useless. I just dump them out. Of. Yeah, well, uh, Philadelphia, I still got to shoot. Phoenix, I still have to shoot. Those are big, high on my list. So is San Antonio. Lotus is doing a, a photo walk in San Antonio tonight, actually. That's awesome. Seems like there's one every week. Doesn't yeah. it? Down there, anyway. Yeah, I wish we had that in Toronto. <laughs> well, you guys, the, the weather's always uh, nice. Yeah. I really like the city of Toronto. I thought it was great. There's so much to shoot there. Yeah. It's kind of funny, though. In the cities, I always kind of feel uh, like whenever I'm walking along the sidewalk or whatever, I kind of feel pressure to, you know, keep up the pace. It's, really? Yeah. That's or one what? of the things that bothers me. Well, if it's a narrow sidewalk and everybody's kind of rushing to... Uh, hey, Doug, what's going on? Uh, not much. How you doing? Hey Good. there. Just uh, heading heading to the kitchen to cook dinner. Saw you guys were here on the way, and you, you distracted me. <laughs> <laughs> What are you making for dinner? Uh, probably making Joe special, just like you get at Joe's San Francisco or whatever. Ah, that's that. Now Joe's special. That's from that's from, that's from college food. Remember that? That's, that's got like hamburger in it, right? Or how do you make it's, it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> Gra- you know we don't call it hamburger. We call it ground beef, right? Oh, ground beef. <laughs> yeah, ground beef, spinach, onions, uh, and uh, a little egg at the end. That sounds great. Yeah, it's good. Good. Sounds hearty. You're making me hungry, Doug. I I I worked my way through college on eating that thing. Yeah, looks good. Yeah. Special. Huh. So what are you guys up to? Hanging out. All right. Talking about, talking about photography. Talking about uh, shooting. Talking about American cities. I uh, you know I after last night's uh, hangout and I couldn't get back in, but I listened to the stream, the uh, interesting stuff with Chi going on last night. Yeah, that was great having Chiga stop by, wasn't it? Yeah, that was really interesting. I enjoyed I enjoyed having him participate. I love the fact that he can sneak in. I know, isn't that great? <laughs> Get a little insight there, a little bit of top secret stuff that's coming yeah. up. Well, these hangouts really are cutting edge. I think. I think they are. I think they're. I think they're interesting on a lot of levels. I think it's kind of like uh, the long tail of television. You know, and once we can even start, I mean, I think it'll be interesting when Google Google comes out with APIs. Like, I mean, imagine if you could watch Hangouts, like, just like on Apple TV and stuff, you know, like on your TV. Right. Just, you know, throw it up there. You're, like, hanging out in your living room having some wine, and you get your friends are up there. I mean, 
I would rather watch like a bunch of my friends just talking than some stupid TV show. Mm-hmm. I mean, even in like kind of the background, you know. Yeah. Are these uh, are these running Flash? What does it say? No Flash. So this is HTML5, I guess, huh? Uh, Doug, you're you're like three levels of smart ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, no, the reason the reason I ask is you mentioned living room. So I've got you know I got an old video camera. I could stick it in the living room. I've got. Apple TV, I could sit there right. in the living, sit there in the living room with my glass of wine, and hang out with you guys. Yeah, the hangouts use the Google Talk plugin. Yeah, yeah. that would be sort of cool. I wonder if that would work on Apple TV. You'll probably see it on Google TV at some point. Right, you would think so, wouldn't you? Google TV yeah, for sure. Yeah. I got it's one. Of Google. Google, Google sent me one of those. I didn't use it. So I gave it to my son. <laughs> I'll ask for it back. <laughs> wow, Doug! I never got one of those. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, I've um, Apple TV. I have an Apple TV. I have I have uh, three, two Apple TVs. Yeah. Uh, one in the living room and one in my boys' bedroom. That they use it. mostly they stream Netflix. So I was out uh, for my sister's birthday. We rented a house out in Dillon Beach. The whole family, and. Yeah. Because because it's similar to Bodega Bay, my sister decided she wanted to watch the birds. Yeah, I got to see the birds. So I go on Apple TV. I rent the the HD version of it, right? Okay. It says it won't stream it. It says will be available in 18 hours. <laughs> it took. Really? It, it actually downloaded the whole film, and it took 18 hours to do it. <laughs> that is ridiculous. We watched it the next night. I mean, why would they? That's you know what that is, Doug. That's these. Uh, that's the studios just being dumb. Well, the fact is that because it was HD and the Wi-Fi was probably not the fastest out there, maybe, maybe the device said, "Hey, at some point, it's going to have to stop," because we couldn't stream it fast enough, and maybe they just figured that out ahead of time. I don't know. Where's Billy? I, don't know. I see yeah, Billy's wall. <laughs> He's invisible. I use the <laughs> facilities or something like that. <laughs> I think Billy's uh, visiting the little girls' room there. <laughs> I don't think. I'm, is it Serge or Sergey? Uh, either it doesn't really matter. Well, come on, it's got to be one or the other. Or uh, Serge, just not okay. the these people on G Plus. <laughs> Good to meet you. You too. Uh, where are you living? Where are you living, by the way? I'm in uh, Marin County, north of San Francisco. I see. I'm How in uh, Toronto right now. Okay. So I got this Nexus phone. Has anybody else got a new phone lately? No. Did you see Leo trashed it? Did you see that? He, he, oh, really? He, he, didn't he, like rev- it? he hated it. It's more like he doesn't like ice cream sandwich. Really? Hmm. That's what he it al- seems most of his yep. implants are based around. He also hated the battery life, though, right? Yeah, I mean, you're going to hate the battery life on almost any... Well, for the, so far, for me, the battery life's been okay. Yeah, it all depends on your proximity to the towers and your signal. Like, if you have a weak signal, your battery's going to go fast, no matter oh. what. It yeah. also depends on uh, if you have different apps that send notifications every, like, five minutes. That'll Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. The Nexus. You know, so far I like it. The, you know, the main thing that I like about it is 4G. Mm-hmm. 4G is so cool. fast. It's unbelievable how fast it is. Yeah, the Verizon 4G is faster than most people's broadband. The, well, that's that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's uh, it's that fast. It's. Let's see here. What does that go to? The okay, can't unplug that. So, like, when you look up when you look up a page on the internet, like, uh, okay, so see, let's let's find a page. Uh, Why don't you pull up? Why you pull up your blog? See, there's a there's a Twitter. Wait, hold on. No, wait. Oh, my blog. Okay, hold on. I'll do my blog. Okay, hold on. T H O. Do you type mostly in a portrait or? Uh, I type mostly in portrait. Yeah. Just because you can. Uh, oh, but you don't use one hand right now, though. 
Uh, well, because I mean, I'm holding it in one hand. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, and that's kind of the thing is it's kind of big, so it's a. Okay, yeah, so that's I, true. You see, I type thomashawk.com in the top. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna hit go. Watch how fast this thing goes. Okay, are we all there? Go. That's pretty good. Oh. Boom! There it is. Loaded. Wow. Oh, that's the mobile version, so it went. It would well, go. Well, okay, but let's click click on one of the links. Can I look at it? Boom, there it is. <laughs> Perfect article to bring up. Flickr is dead. <laughs> and then you get the whole thing. But it's just so, the 4G is just so fast. It's probably faster than my connection right now. <laughs> it's, and, and, well, it feels like it's every bit as fast as what I've had at work or home. And yeah, that's, and that's some a sprint. Like 20 megabit results and stuff like that. And that's a sprint, right? No, uh, Horizon. Horizon. Oh, Verizon, okay. The Sprint 4G is not that great. So I like that, and I like, uh, I like, like, the Google Music. I can put my Google Music, and I can listen to it, and it's got the cloud, so, like, all my stuff in the cloud, or the stuff I've got on the phone. It kinda, and I can tell it to only play stuff from the cloud or only play stuff from the phone. The camera wasn't working for some reason. The yet stopped working. It's still kind of buggy. There's still some bugs in it. Hey, Billy's back, and hello, Ron. Hey, how's it going? Hey, hey Ron. Dad. What's going on? Uh, my cats are fighting. Thanks. Cat fighting. <laughs> Who's winning? Uh, it's a draw. Ron, are you an iPhone guy? Yeah, I am. Are you talking uh, about the new phone? I was talking about the Nexus. Yeah, the new Nexus. But oh, yeah, that's uh, pretty You like long. the iPhone? Do I like my iPhone? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I, I'm not really a, a super demanding phone guy, though. I just, I kind of, I talk on it and take some pictures, and that's about it. That's true. Does everybody in here use the iPhone? No. Yeah. No. no. Use a dumb phone. Hey, I was watching uh, network news on TV tonight, and there was a story about a full-length feature film shot on a Nokia. That's <laughs> all. Uh, they they did absolutely everything. They had to hack the phone to disable autofocus and auto zoom or something. But um, it's showing for one week in LA, so it can be submitted for Academy Awards. Was it Blair, Blair Witch too? <laughs> no, no, it was. Uh, I'm kidding. Yeah, but they actually had uh, had Jenna <laughs> Rollins was in it. So they they actually got a oh. uh, a legit actress to play one of the roles. I'll find it here somewhere. Oh. Look, it looked really good. I mean, it, obviously, I'm watching it on television, but it was pretty impressive. Didn't they hold a contest to have users submitted to movies for them to advertise it? Uh, this is a feature-length film. I don't know what the. Oh, no, I read about that. I, you know, I just opened up now the like the uh, comments on this post, and it looks like uh, what's going on here? Kim Penderton, Kimberly Penderton, and Billy are going at it. <laughs> <laughs> Billy. Oh, Kim wants to know when the drinking's going to start. <laughs> I think I'm, like, late. That was, like, ten minutes ago. Gary, you weren't even in here yet, Then now you're in here. Well, I've right. been here a little while. Yeah, just keep drinking. All right. All right. Okay, I'm drinking. There we go. A little one. <laughs> a little, uh, vino. What are we drinking tonight? We're drinking, uh... We're drinking Chateau La Louverie. Wow. French. Very nice. All right. I got Spanish. Spanish? Yeah. Nice. I like those dots on it. Oh, yeah. It's a great, great wine. Monte Oton. Hmm. I have Kentucky bourbon in the kitchen, but I purposely didn't drink this time because last time I had some, and I just kind of sat here like a lump. <laughs> it's so mellow. <laughs> Well, I talk. I talk more when I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got to be careful, or else maybe Google will make us take a breathalyzer test before <laughs> hangouts next time. <laughs> Dude, you got to get this USB breathalyzer. Yeah, and if we, <laughs> yeah. if they don't detect alcohol, they won't let us in. Oh. <laughs> I know when I'm when I'm making comments on posts and I'm drinking. Yeah, they, 
They tend to get pretty colorful sometimes. You know? <laughs> they can get colorful. Yeah. You know what we need? What we need to do? What Google would probably really wants us to do here is to like start streaming some Metallica videos. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. God. Or like everybody, you know, because Metallica likes to share, right? They like. To share. <laughs> Or we should play un unreleased movies that are still in the theater. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody have some Disney films they can show? Somebody got the new Sherlock Holmes that we can stream? Sherlock Holmes, <laughs> perfect. Somebody go out and bit tort and get it right. Wait a minute. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah, you can't even say that. <laughs> We're getting shut down now for that. Right. <laughs> I was just joking around. I would never use bit torn. I don't even know what it is. Never heard Me of it. Me I totally don't it. even know what it is. I've never even heard of it. Yeah. So it's bad, whatever it is. It's very You're talking about, talking about the wine. I was, when I was in the hospital, I was heavily drugged, but I insisted, insisted my wife bring me my laptop. And I got onto Google Plus, and I tried to write a post. And I spent <laughs> like an, an hour trying to write one sentence, and I couldn't read my own sentence. I finally just gave up. I was like, you know, I couldn't, it just didn't make any sense no matter what I wrote. So... Good drugs, though. So, so <laughs> speaking speaking of wives and significant others, does does anyone else's so make fun of them for being in here doing this? Because mine does. She's like, "What what are you guys doing in there?" It's my, oh, mine's my, no, mine's my, my, making fun. Mine's awesome. She'll join she'll join hangouts and stuff. She's, and, she's in the kitchen right now, saying, "How come I'm not out there cooking and doing my share?" <laughs> so I got to go soon. I got no one to answer to. So. <laughs> well. I've, I've, I've got sort of a big love marriage. I've got three wives. <laughs> wow. Living the life. Not all at once, though. I got, you know, here in Utah, we, uh, we have a, uh, I've never seen that show. Big love? Oh, Big Love is great. I love that show. Are you being serious? You really yeah. like it? Oh, I love it. Oh, it's, it's one of the best shows ever I've ever watched. It's wonderful, yeah. Uh, Harry Dean Stanton plays uh, the uh, prophet Roman Grant. He does a wonderful job. And, and Bill Paxton plays, uh, uh, what's his name? The main guy. The main guy, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I should know that, right? Anyways, uh, and he's got three wives, and they all eat, they have three houses, so each wife gets their own house. And... You know, it's kind of like every man's dream, right? You got three houses, three wives, and all the money to take care of it. No, I'm kidding. Is that show still running, or has it been canceled? I think it's still going. Yeah. And and so, what would a typical episode be about? Well, three wives, three houses, and it's like it's like the you know the challenge of like juggling uh, three wives in a world that kind of doesn't allow that. And the, you know it's illegal. Polygamy is illegal, and so they've kind of got to. But he's a, he's in a, he's not like the old polygamist that we see vilified as this like crazy old backwater guy. He's like a modern guy that owns a home improvement store and he's a successful businessman and he's uh, doing all of these things. But he was grew up in a polygamous compound and uh, followed what they called the principle. And you know all that. I don't think you even have time to watch that show. Uh, you know, I have time to watch some TV. I like Big Love. I, I like I like most of like the premium shows. I mean, my favorite show on TV right now is probably Breaking Bad. Mm. Oh, that's an awesome show. Isn't that good? Yeah, I think I yeah. can get all those oh. episodes. I can't wait till the next season for that. Breaking Bad and Mad Men are probably my two favorite shows. Oh, I love Mad Men. Mad Men's one I watch. Oh, That's great. Isn't they, aren't they good? When, when, they, when does that start up again? In January? It seems like it takes them like three years to do a new season, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think my favorite is Game of Thrones. I have not seen Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. oh, it's, it's awesome. It's good? What, what, what network's it on? HBO. Hmm. For adults only. <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah, I like all the HBO. Well, what, what's it about, Dave? What's Game of Thrones about? Um, well, it's based on all... The, it's like a whole series of books that are very successful. Um... I guess the whole series is Song of Ice and Fire or something like that, but um, it's it's just a whole really involved story of characters back in ancient times, let's say, or medieval times, and but it's not it's not historical really in any sense. It's all fiction. Um, it's a whole it's fictional like, world. It's kind of like it's kind of like Lord of the Rings meets. Um, 
meets nudity and sex and violence. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then it's like Seinfeld. <laughs> what? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Security, yeah. Hey, Thomas, you, you cost me money yesterday. Why? What happened? I, I bought a used... 135 f2 nikon lens oh my god I, good for you it's coming from nikon but this this 135 f2 stuff just finally got to me and i broke down and found a good, good deal on a used one that's great why well, it's i'm i'm curious what it's like with nikon i love the canon version yeah well i rent i rented one that's the how i decided oh okay and, and you liked uh, it renting yeah it? it's great and then the nikon one is what they call a, a dc lens a mm -hmm. uh Defocus control. Yeah, defocus control. Do you have the lens, Dave? No, I don't actually. Oh, I thought that was Dave. Yeah. No. Um, no, it's um, I rented it, and it's it's really weird because if you shoot somewhere with a tighter aperture than f2, like up to f5.6, okay, you can dial in defocusing. So you can, let's say you're at 5.6, right? Right. You can say I want the f I want it to be as out of focus it as as it would be at f2, but only for the foreground or the background. That's I have weird. I have no idea how it works, but I used yeah, it and it, it worked really well. Magic. Five does not have that. No, but if you're doing portrait work and let's say you want to you want to shoot it at 5.6, but you want the depth of field of f2, you can defocus the background to the equivalent mm -hmm. of f2, and it works. <laughs> That's interesting. That sounds great. Uh, does this work even if your subject is like off center as well? Yeah, yeah. So. I have no idea how it works. But anyway, the lens, the lens. I I use it off for a weekend, and it's. So like, I, I I think it's as good. You know, I think it's as good as the Canon. We'll find out for sure. But was it expensive? Did you? How much was it? I spent nine hundred and eighty bucks used. Okay, so that's the the Canon one new is like nine fifty. Yeah, new the Nikon's thirteen or fourteen hundred. Okay. And it's an older lens. They don't. It you know, makes sense because you always got to pay like a little extra more for Nikon because they like to kind of gouge you. Yeah, it's a Nikon tax. tax. There it's you Nikon go. Tax, right? Beard, what's going on, Beard? Oh, not much, man. Just hanging out. <laughs> Got done with dinner. Right. You didn't go on the San Antonio photo photo walk tonight with Lotus? No, my girlfriend asked me to uh, stay in for dinner, so I decided oh, not to go. Beard, come on, who's the person there in that relationship? Well, it's not every day she asks you to stay in and have dinner, so. Jeez. Dinner dinner with the girlfriend or like going to San Antonio and taking pictures? Really? You're going to stay Have home? you been to San Antonio before? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is it yeah, I'd, be better off going, I'd be better off going down in South Congress right now than to go to San Antonio. That's just my opinion, though. I, I don't think San Antonio is that that. Fabulous, but that's so. it is one of the largest American cities. It's one of the top ten American cities. It's bigger. Yeah, than it's, it's huge. It's yeah. Huge. But um, I don't know. It was just one of those. It's kind of like Houston <laughs> to me. Houston is just a place you just do not want to go. So. Oh come on, <laughs> Houston's great. I love shooting in Houston. Well, you're not from Texas, so you don't know really much about Houston. <laughs> well, I do know they have some amazing architecture downtown, which I shot. Yeah. It, yeah, that's true. The architecture is pretty cool, and there's some great cityscapes. I got some great cityscapes at night. And when yeah. I wait, when I used to go there, because Texaco was a client of mine, every radio station played ZZ Top all day long. <laughs> you know, the, the, the one problem with Houston is Houston is really spread out. Like it's like it's like there's strip mall after strip mall after strip mall after strip mall. It's huge. Houston is, shot, is massive. I shot a comic book convention though in Houston, Comic Palooza. That's cool. That was so, pretty cool. The, the big question is, it, it, if you live in Houston, how many wives can you have? You can only have one in America now. Ah. Unless you're on the show Big Love. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Then you get three. That's funny. <laughs> Anyone on Big Love have more than three wives? Sorry to go back to the Big Love thing, but it really fascinates me, even though I haven't watched the show yet. <laughs> well, look at me. I know the feeling. No, I'm kidding. All right. <laughs> All right. She's yelling. i got to go cook. All right. See you guys. Yeah, nice bye. meeting you. See you. Oh, yeah. If you're still here, I'll be back. Hey, Billy's there. Oh. Hi, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Whoa. So, the, so these, are my, these are my Houston photos. Nice. Let's see if I can pull these up. 
So they have, uh, like, the architecture. Like, look at this architecture. It's just so stunning downtown. And, of course, the comic book convention, I shot that. But, like, the Enron Center, that thing is like a spaceship. Wow. You know, I mean... They must have money. Houston's got great architecture. That one yeah, I'll give, I'll give it that, but that's about <laughs> probably all it has. I mean, Williams? The Williams building, that was pretty cool. These purple underlit, like, uh... Oh, yeah. Like, uh, overpasses or whatever. What What are those lit by? Lights, purple lights. But, okay, so they're just... It's an intentional thing, though. I know that sounds stupid, but they want them to be purple like that all the time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But the I love that Enron building. That circle. Cool. Apparently, they spent a lot of money building that thing before right. Enron went bust. You know, but it feels like you're like in Star Trek or something. And that Williams building. That Williams building is also very cool. I tell you what, Thomas. Next time you're in Texas, I'll go to Houston with you and shoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm done with Houston now. I have to go shoot San Antonio next. Oh, okay. Well, I'll do San Antonio with you. I gotta do San Antonio. I gotta do El Paso in Texas. Oh. I gotta do Irving, Texas, still. Oh no. I shot. I shot Dallas. 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 Oh no. Isn't that sad? Ricardo. Hey Ricardo. What's up, Thomas? What's going on, brother? I'm trying to put together a hit list, and I gotta go out and shoot it tonight. Oh, what are you gonna shoot tonight? Uh, I need like two more shots or three more shots for for my photo death match tomorrow. So, uh -huh. so in San Francisco, I want to go and I want to shoot uh, light trails, like uh, car lights. Yeah, I, think I want to get the 101. Do you think um? You think there's a hill over in Petrera Hill or somewhere up there where you can look down on the 101? Yeah, you know what I would do, Ricardo. You're going too far. What you should, where you should hit trails, light trails. Yeah. You know, on uh, Gary Street, by just on the, just like uh, like Gary and I want to say what's that street? Like the Visadero, just before the Visadero, just before Chinatown. Yeah, okay. Look you like know, below Chinatown, right? Yeah. It's right. So so you, so you know where you know where Geary is and you know where Chinatown is and it goes underneath sort of that underpass, that tunnel. On um, Geary, that Geary goes underneath? Yeah, you know Geary goes underneath that tunnel. Yeah, uh, okay, over, that's over by my house, over by the um Well that's what I'm saying. Why are you thinking of driving all the way down to Portrero Hill? I don't know. I'm gonna, I got lots of places to hit. I'm gonna hit Ocean Beach. That's you can you, you can get great light trails if you get in the middle of that road, like as the cars are going down under that tunnel towards yeah. like Chinatown. You can get great photos. And another place to get fantastic photos of light trails that's a little bit closer than Potrero Hill is yeah, you, where? you know the Broadway tunnel. You know the Broadway tunnel. Yeah, the, the one that's in your top fifty. I, I was I was looking through Trey's top fifty, and I was looking at your photos to decide what. Oh, do I have that in here? Yeah. There's a you can if you stand on Hyde Street, it goes yep. right above those tunnels, and you can shoot right down on those tunnels. I was gonna check that out. That's definitely on the check it out list. Watch, I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out. I'm gonna go to Ocean Beach, and I'm, I think we have a clear night. And I think if I point my camera into the ocean, I can probably make. I might be able to make a star trail. Maybe. Maybe. So I'm going to try that. I want to get a light trail, like a cart light trail. I'm going to try the spots you just talked about. And then I like some of the other shots that you got, at the, like out of the Fairmont Hotel and out of the um, um, uh, Town Hilton. I'm going to try to get in there. Hilton, the bo the both of those are pretty easy to get into. You know, the key, so with the, with the uh, Fairmont, if there's not a, <clears throat> if there's not an event in the crown room, you just take the elevator up to the floor that's below the crown room. Then you get off the elevator on that floor, and right across the hall is like the ice machine where you would go to get ice. Yeah. And you go right in there, and you'll see a service elevator. And then ride that up one more floor. Right. You ride that service elevator up one more floor. It drops you off. Then you go out like a door, and you're right there in the crown room. The lights are off. It's empty. You have a place to yourself. You're on top of the world. Cool. 
That was going to be it. That's going to be me, and uh, I'm going to leave like in 30 minutes, probably. Jeez, you're going hardcore tonight. I need two or three more pictures. <laughs> Can't lose that death match. <laughs> yeah, I want to. I want to give a good showing. Especially after last week. <laughs> what happened last week? Yeah. That was the uh, Teresa's. And yeah. Did they not do a good showing? Oh no, that you have to live up to their last week's performance. Oh well, I mean that's hard. They had some really good people on there. I like your self-portrait too, by the way, Thomas, that you have on the fifty, in the top fifty. Oh, up on top of uh, Knob Hill. Yeah, top of Twin Peaks. Ricardo, we have two Ricardos now. Double Ricardo. <laughs> side by side in the hangout, two Ricardos. How is it possible? You better grab a screen cap of that. <laughs> How is that even humanly possible? It's like an X file or something. What's you know where there might be um, a good spot to take pictures of the city? It's uh, the top of Bernal Hill. There's a great spot. There's, a, there's an absolute wonderful spot. I've shot up there before. If you can just drive up there and park and walk up there, you can shoot a wonderful shot right down on top of the mission. All the lights, it's beautiful. Cool. All right, I have more than enough choice. You'll, you're gonna be you're gonna be busy tonight, Ricardo. You're probably gonna, gonna get home at like four in the morning. I got home. I went out yesterday at ten, and I got home at two. You know what's interesting? Not only do we have two, we have, not only do we have two Ricardos, we have two Ricardo L's. Oh yeah. <laughs> they both start with L, their last name, Ricardo L. So, so Ricardo L. So, Ricardo L, who's in, uh, are you in New Mexico right now? Then. Ricardo Liberetto, are you, in, are you in New Mexico? No, I have to stay in, Euro in Europe to close a few deals. What? I thought you were doing a New Mexico trip or something. I was, I was. I even sorted out models. The guys are having fun with all the models. I'm stuck here negotiating contracts. <laughs> oh, my God. That sounds boring. <laughs> you could be in New well, Mexico taking pictures of models, naked models, Ricardo. What do you think I'm doing in Europe in the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're doing there, you bad boy. So, Ricardo, let's talk, let's talk about uh, your photos of those uh, clubs. Is that what, what you call them? Clubs? In Europe? Yeah. You better, well, you can screen share that. You can. I can screen share that. Yeah. I'm going to pull it up right now. So tell, tell us about that. Tell us about how do you, uh, how do I, do you, have al do you have an album of those photos? Yeah, go to his profile. It's on. The, it's the, he's got an album. But what, oh, strippers and clients. Oh, I just posted it. Yeah, strippers and clients. One. This is a popular uh, series. If you just find, like, like, and that's the other. Okay, so this, if we if we screen share this one, our probably our views on our Google on our Hangout will go up exponentially. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's only seen the small kids. I'm not talking about it. So let's, uh, let's fire these up. Okay, there we go. My favorite is the one of the girl all by herself outside of a... Uh, she's just got, like, overhead lighting. It's really great. Oh, yeah. I found another photo of that girl. I just posted it today. Oh, I'm going to go look at that. <laughs> So, is it working? Can you guys see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see it. Let me find the place yeah. with light. I just post that. That's another photo of the same girl. Ricardo, let's, 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 let's talk. Let's, let's talk about these photographs. <laughs> yeah. How, how, how do you get access to do them? How, right. How do you get access to shoot inside of a strip club? I, and it's a little bit easier because it's to own the club, right? Oh, you own the so club? Are you the owner? No, I owned one club six years ago. You owned a strip club six years ago? Yeah. Only six months. It was a 
It was a strip club that was going bankrupt. I took it over, turned it around, and sold it on. But that kind My of got me. Now it makes sense. You owned a strip club. That now no wonder what you could do it. But so I have no your... photos of the fact that I owned the strip club because I lost the bloody computer <laughs> where I had the photos. <laughs> oh my god. So you so own my own club. <laughs> That's Atlas. That's a uh, club so I access to shooting. So how did I get access to that? How do you get access to these strip clubs, Ricardo? <laughs> No ask. What do you mean, don't ask? Do you, look at this picture. Look at this picture. You have the stripper, and then you also have, you see the expression. Can you guys see the expression on these two guys' face? That's awesome. That is great. But Ricardo, how do you like? How do you, don't these people like not want their photo taken inside a strip club? Well, you know my face. I can get away with murder. Oh, come on. No, it's not that simple. It's not that simple. Those guys probably didn't even notice them taking pictures. <laughs> they could see me. I'm just across the right, so, so do you have like a, do you have some, because you, you so you own a strip club, so do you have relationships with some of I got relationships, it's a lot more fun than with the managers. And from the get a relationship with the manager. The club is decorated. It's photos made by me nowadays. So do you have to pay that like kind the of manager off? No, I I gave them pictures for free. It's a little. I gave them pictures for free, and they let me shoot. So that club Atlas is decorated all around. I think there are twelve. Okay, and. Um, but it didn't start like that. It started small. I met one girl, the host of the strip clubs. I met one girl called Penny in the strip club in Frankfurt, like four years ago, something like that. Yeah, 2008. And um, she saw some of my landscape work, and she said, can you shoot woman? Well, if you stand still in front of the can, Pinocchio and I five on She said, oh, to the private me and take uh, some photos. And I made, like, I made like three or four photos, but the total scene inside a private booth in the club. And she loved right. them. I don't know how. And uh, she said, when you come to Prague, come over and you can make some photos. I went to Prague after a couple of months. I called her up. She picked me up from the airport. And next, time, next thing, I'm talking to the manager of the club, and he was letting us use one of the private rooms in the club. But it's a private room with a swimming pool uh, to make some photos. Oh. The photos came out right. I got this, I got to meet the bouncers, I got the strippers, I dated about eight of the strippers that worked there over the years. So now I just need to show up there with my camera and no one even looks at it. Be the club full, be the club empty, they just know it's Ricardo making for them. And if the yeah, clients want anything, they should go complain to the bouncers. The bouncers are in the shot too. If you, if you look there, there is a shot of three guys in front of the strip club door. Those are the bouncers that are supposed to keep me out. But like some of these, yeah. I mean, the patrons. My first. Okay. I mean, the patrons, their faces are. Their faces I are I visible. I, don't, I try not to get them in very compromising situations, but I never ask a patron if I can make it short. If he doesn't want it, he can come to me and ask me to delete the shot. No one ever did. I've had cases where a guy will cover his face or something like that. No problem. I delete that photo. So it sucked. But maybe strip clubs are a little bit different in Europe than they are in the U.S. Maybe people in Europe have a bit more liberal uh, opinion about the <laughs> problem, so too. So half of the girls in there are hookers. That photo was awesome. Sorry? So, that so these photo. are yeah. That's so Roberta. These are, so these are these are brothels too. Are they brothels or just strip club? Uh, I made photos in two brothels which are harder. I make photos in uh, uh, strip clubs nowadays. 
and I've made in a few other strip clubs around Europe. Here's the Once thing, you have the port Thomas, so this, this isn't even all the really good stuff. The really good stuff he can't post. No, I know, I know. He's posted. I, I, I've seen a lot of those though. That's the the I am cynical post those. Yeah, I have, I have been going back to the, through the material of that of those times, and now that I actually know how to process the photos, I have some really really good gems in there. But um, in that set, I already have four photos that I had to delete from Google Plus because they got reported by the way. If there is a oh, people inside, it censored them, huh? Yeah. They should get a scheme like 500px. Uh, yeah. Leak with where someone could say, "I don't like boobies. Don't show me boobies." And you can mark a picture and say, "There are boobies." If someone is allergic to boobies, they shouldn't take it. <laughs> like packaging of, wall, of chocolate. Says thanks now. <laughs> this hangout just got a lot more interesting in the last ten minutes. <laughs> what happens yeah, when Ricardo come in? <laughs> Atlas Cabaret. So where is the Atlas Cabaret? Where in Europe is that, Ricardo? That's in Prague. In it's Prague. the second bar in Prague. It has about 15 strippers and 40 hookers. 15 strippers <laughs> and 40 hookers. I know I love that shot. Them. So, so uh, I love this shot. This, this is, is great. Amazing. That's an amazing photograph. I love that. You know what this... That's a... Uh, yeah. You know what this re reminds me of a little bit, Ricardo, is are you familiar at all with Larry Sultan's work? No, but send me a link and I'll, I'll look through it. I, I did the video Larry Sultan. I, a lot of, I the photographer's work. Larry Sultan, uh, he died last year, and he was in a wonderful like expose on the pornography industry in Van Nuys, down in L.A. He did a book called The Valley. Wonderful yeah. pictures of people like working in that industry. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to collect that kind of photos nowadays. Uh, I started, I had to start by making photos of the girls, like post shots, the kind of stuff you saw in The World Wanderer and I Am Cynical. Right. You have to get the trust and everything. Then after you get the trust, then you can get to do the really juicy stuff. I'm only allowed to shoot with patrons in the house in two clubs. Uh, one of them is Atlas Cabaret, and the other is uh, about Sugar and Spice. And uh, I, the other, two, the other shoot, I cannot shoot with patrons. So I can go there off hours and make photos of strippers, which is not the thing. I mean, that's that's remarkable. Is that a patron or a bouncer? What is that guy? Oh, that's that's a totally different story. That's in Riga. Uh, in Riga, there is this scam where girls, really pretty girls, are walking on the street, and you meet them, and they say, "Hey, you're really cool." Let's go to a bar. Once you get to the bar, you get stranded with a massive bill because it changed the price list. So these two girls work in that industry. They're actually the queens. Of the, they tried to play the scam on me. And I just told them, hey, girls, I know the scam. But if you want some photos, I can make some photos of you. Oh, you're cool. So I got to hang out with them. For free. And then... Well, they would invite they would invite me to sit with them and whatever guy they were suck they were <laughs> they were sucking the wallet out of and I would also be drinking drink that the guy would be paying for an outrageous price and uh, I got a few so he would be paying for retired and married guy he would be paying for your drink too of course so he this guy so these these girls find this guy and they say hey do you want to have a drink. Then they yeah. take them to a bar that they have an existing relationship with, and they order yeah. super expensive drinks and run yeah, a bar food for them. Yeah, nothing super ultra expensive, but the guy, if he spends a couple of hours with them, you'll think that he might get sex at the end, which he doesn't, and uh, or that's his expectation. But he'll, he'll be short a thousand bucks, and they're good fun to hang out with. These two girls, they're great fun. I also have them on <laughs> people. Oh, uh, Ricardo, these are great stories. I like these. Yeah. That uh, looks like the guy from the Reservoir Dogs. That guy. So, that guy. So you met, you met these two girls. Because they tried to play the scam on me. They tried to play no, on Mr. you. Mr. White. Yes. Yeah. And I told them, yeah, you know what? 
These are great. Look at that. Good photos. That one was great. Tell us yeah, about this one. This is the photo I took. That was when I did, two years ago, and I arrived to Norwich, and that's in the smoking area in the club. That's in a brothel in Germany, in Villa Vertigo. It's a brothel in Germany. It's a club that's from. It's a brothel. What is this guy's comment? What is this? What is this guy Shams Mahmood? Women here are sold at ridiculous prices. Slavery is the new guy. This guy, this guy spammed my spammed my stream. I even made a post about that. I reported a few. He spammed my stream with like thirty comments of that. Some Arabic guy, but he called me a friend and he apologized. So did you block him? Part of the little anti father. Part of the little anti sex anti father. That's a hooker, a street hooker from Riga. I blocked him and reported him. This this one is a street hooker. Yeah, that's a street hooker. We were walking. A friend, uh, me and a friend of mine, were walking back from the day I met those girls, the the blondes. And we get outside. My, my friend was a big black guy, Carl McGowan. And uh, these girls were having some argument with an Italian guy, which involves something about penis size. And uh, then I show up with this friend of mine, and they turn to him and say, I bet you have a big penis. But, well, they didn't use the word penis, actually. But. And right. uh, <laughs> somehow we ended up up in, up in the apartment. I also have a shot of this girl, another girl, and the patron in the middle, the Italian guy. And uh, we ended up upstairs in the apartment making photos and having some fun. <laughs> 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 I, I don't know what that means, but it sounds uh, great. I'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> you might have seen this girl with a lot less clothes on. The, most of the photo, that I have to work very carefully to find the photo of this girl with clothes on. She's a professional. She works at this soundclub.com. And she always wore these beautiful outfits and, and without shoes, as you can see. I think she has no shoes in that. I, I, my my hangout thingy on the top I cannot see, so I'm looking at it through your little window. Maybe if I click, no. I, I have so, to look at so the, people, people that are watching. That's people that are, people yeah, that that's are watching the hangout can only see the little window, right? No, no, no. This is a massive sound club. It has a swimming pool and stuff like that. No, no. I'm saying the people the people that are watching they can only see uh, the little window on the hangout. Yeah, yeah. Unless no. they unless they look at the source of the stream and pull out the video link. Ah, okay. Yeah, right. that, that's, I have quite a few photos like that shot inside Villa, if I have customers. That was a, sh a shoot without, that, that was the second shoot I did for another club here in Norwich for the lace. That was shot without patrons, that was with studio lights. That was just the, the cover image for last Christmas. Did you bring, so you brought your lights in to do these? Yeah, I brought, I brought some lights in. At that time I only had speed lights, so. Uh, I'm going to do a much better shoot for another club in January, which is where I'm going to bring my pro photos and the phase one and shit. And that's to a really good club. That was, that shot in... Uh, how, 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 how do all these shots stay up on Google Plus with all the uh, nudity and all that? Well, uh -huh. only the ones with nipples have been reported, and somehow that one hasn't been reported yet. I'm just waiting. <laughs> Man, my favorite <laughs> shot got reported because it's not there anymore. Yeah, it did get reported. I can post it again just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about my, that, that shot is that it had full frontal. It was pretty good. Click, click to name. Should we should we people tag this woman? I'm kidding. That's the. These are that, great. That's the, yeah, that's in my apartment actually. That's the stripper getting ready to go to work. What's she doing in your apartment, Ricardo? She's a great friend of mine. I know her for 12 years. She worked in my club, and then she comes. She usually comes. She's here tonight. It's her birthday, and uh, but she's now working <laughs> at the club, and she comes over to visit. Uh, she's just a friend, though. Before you guys start having other ideas, and she was the street. She was the pole dancing champion of Portugal and Spain. She's fantastic. The photo you saw before, the one you just scrolled through. I really love it, but I think it's a bit, I think it's the one, let me just see, yeah, that photo has so many stories in it, but it's a little bit dark, but you see a hooker that looks a little bit like Angelina Jolie reflected on a, on one mirror, you see a patron reflected on another mirror, you see another hooker, 
Get the knock list. That's nothing special. No, 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 wait, wait, honey. Uh, That's my ex-girlfriend, Elena. This is your ex-girlfriend? Elena. Okay. That, that she was one of the snipers who became the models to doing the work for us. Sometimes it got kind of mixed up. She was fantastic. She had the best legs I've ever seen. <laughs> Those are the guys who are supposed to kick me out. The guy on the left is the Taekwondo or something like that champion for Czech Republic. Wow. And a really cool guy, too. I'm supposed to, next time I go over, I'm supposed to make some photos of his martial arts stuff. Hmm. That I cannot recognize from the tiny hip hole. That's a stripper off duty. You know, this is great though because I don't I don't know if it shows in the hangout very well, but the expression on that guy's face is like looking up. It's yeah, the guy is really in the corner. Yes. Is he smiling over there? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, they were priceless. I think it was the first time they were in a strip club. Maybe they didn't even know that it was. That's in Holland. That that was the only time that I walked into a strip club for the first time. I had my camera. I met one of the strippers and said, why don't you make some photos of me while the club is running? I haven't been back there because it's in the middle of fucking nowhere. But that was a very easy one. But nowadays it's a lot easier because, because I have all this portfolio and it's on my iPhone. Right. I'll just use it. That was a great photo. Yeah, this is from the one with the smoke? Yeah. Yeah. That, that was... Not that was trying to reproduce what they do. Why is this one guy have the same comment on every single one of your photos, though? Women here are sold at ridiculous prices. Slavery is a new. He's a wanker. Posted like I've been deleting them when I see them. So like uh, Thomas, you should go to go to that guy's profile, and he has a post about <laughs> Ricardo. He has a post about him and about how he went through all of his photos and made that same post in each one. Yeah. Why? Yeah. What's his point? What is he upset about him? He, he doesn't like the pictures. It's a. It sounds like uh, he feels uh, like religious. This is the thing he has to do to to protect women. I think huh. you guys prefer to see his face on the hangout instead of mine. I basically blocked him and reported him for spam. Yeah, that seems very spammy. I, I haven't blocked him because I'm waiting for some fun. Maybe all his Muslim friends come up to me and I get some free publicity in Iran and Iraq. Come on. <laughs> I yeah, guess I have a disproportionate number of followers from Iran and Iraq, by the way. I don't know why. Yeah, if you're missing followers from that part of the world, then yeah, that's a good, that's a good yeah, point. That's, that's a, a, that's that's a great point. That's uh, Scarlett. I have some really good stuff of her. She, she's the one who was behind the Berlin Wall, one of my favorite photos that is not on Google+, Plus, but it's on 500px. She's traveled. This was one time that she showed up totally fucked up at my apartment to make some. That's my studio, by the way, where she where wow. she's sitting. See, look at look at this. These patrons. I mean, look at the expressions on their face. That's just. This is a wonderful, unique portrait of uh, you know. It's. I mean, I'm trying to collect enough of that to publish a book, but. Uh, I, I, have, I, have, I just looked yesterday. The, the source material for these 100 photos are 10,000 shots that are sitting on my hard drive. All right, guys, so I'm going to get out of here. Wish me luck. Good luck. Right, Good luck. luck. Look at those light trails. Yes. Cheers. All right. I'll go ahead and stuff these. Ricardo, these are, these are, it's a wonderful series. You've done a terrific job with it. It's, uh, it's great. Yeah, I'll try, I'll try to get them published somehow. You should. But, yeah. I mean, they're really I, the they're best material I'm getting currently, because now I have this access to shooting the patrons. That's quite recent, actually. The, pay, yeah. well, the, 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 the most powerful shots are the shots that are, you know, and, and as the title of your series is, Strippers and Their Clients. Yeah, but it took me four years of work to get to the point of being able to include the patrons in the shots. Right. I mean, but that's the, the, those are the most powerful shots because you get the expressions of the patrons. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I mean, and then it, do, do, do these patrons know they're being photographed or they don't know? I'm sitting in their face. 
So I, I shoot with a 35 millimeter or 50 millimeter lens. So. Right. So they know. They know they're being photographed. Half those shots are made with the Leica M9. The other half are made with the Canon 1D Mark IV. So and they're, so they're, one way they cannot see. And shooting with the 50 mil and filling the frame with them, there is no way they cannot see. It's like, it's like street photography. Just do it in, indoors. And you right. But, but it. does anybody ever say, like, you know, what the fuck are you doing? Get out of my face? <laughs> Well, the, half the time I'm hanging out with the bouncers just not to get them any ideas. And the other half I'm hanging out with the strippers. And when a stripper starts doing a show, if I like the stripper and if I see something happening, I'll pull out the camera and go make some photos. And they, they know that, uh, I don't know, patrons are like, if this guy was not allowed to make photos, the bouncer would kick him out or something like that. There, there is a strange psychological reaction. I've seen it I've, on occasion. I've seen guys cover their face, and I respect that. Right. I would just, I would just think, hey, Karen, how's it going? Hey, I thought you needed a real woman in here. <laughs> we need a woman. We, well, we've been looking at photos of her. We need photos, a, yes. Yeah. It's good to have a woman actually in here. It is. <laughs> we got a different perspective. Oh, right. no. Not that different. So, Karen, have you seen these photos that Ricardo's been making? Yeah, yeah I actually looked at them before. Was very, I was very um, curious about his pictures when I saw his avatar, actually, for the first time a few weeks ago. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's very powerful. I love it. So yeah, then I, I was um, really angry. It was because of a stripper, by the way. Oh, <laughs> it's a really good picture. You know, I always thought when you're on Google, you need a, you need a recognizable av avatar. That just helps you so much because people remember your face, and then it just adds to the whole who am I talking to kind of thing, right? Yeah. So, yeah, and I figured you're in Eastern Europe, right? Czech Republic, is that true? Uh, in the UK. Yeah, oh, okay. So, yeah. No, I mean, I'm from Germany. There's strip clubs there. There's hookers on the road. It's just a very normal thing there. So, Karen, you live in Germany? No, I'm in Canada right now. Very Canada. Another yeah. Canadian, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, I'm still German. Hangouts now have Canadian. Oh wow! Ooh. It seems like every hangout ends up getting full of Canadians. Yeah. I'm not Canadian. <laughs> well, no, but you're, pretty, but you're in Canada right now. Yes, that's true. Okay. She's we been indoctrinated. So how does that Canadian citizenship? How do you decide if you're Canadian or not? I mean, do you have to live in Canada for a certain number of years? I think you are the 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 the, the citizenship of the passport that you own, and I only uh -huh. have a German passport, so. Okay, so you're German then. Okay, yes. that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Good in time. Your passport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can't. The Germans won't allow me to have any other passport other than a German one. So if I want to become Canadian, I have to give up the German, the German passport. So and Germany is not just Germany; it's the U European Union. So I'm kind of hesitant on doing that because it's kind of cool to have that. Well, yeah. Germany, Germany is a great, com great country. It's a terrific country. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, I love it. It's just that. What's wrong with that? My my road in life let me here, so now I'm here. But I don't want to tie all the uh, I want to cut all the all the ties to it. So yeah, well that makes sense. I didn't want to interrupt your talking about pictures. No, 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 no. We no, we we looked at a lot of those pictures. We looked at 111 of them. So oh, wow. I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go get some more wine okay. and you can keep talking. We might have three strippers running the hangouts soon as soon as they get off work. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be the most popular one yet. <laughs> Oh, by the way, this is my studio. Very nice. The stories behind how you get those pictures, though, are they're cool. Um, they're interesting. I might be. I'll I'll rejoin the Hangout from my other computer where I have all my photos because then I can show you unpublished material. Uh oh. <laughs> do you, why do you have the screen? Do you have screen sharing on in here? You could. Do I, I don't know if I can do that, but. Uh, I'll have, to, I'll have to leave the... Oh, maybe I can join the Hangout at the same time as two people. Does that work? I'm not sure. Well, right now it's full. I can I can leave again if you want to do that. That's fine. I know. It's okay. I was seeing... It should be possible to transfer your Hangout from one place to the other. 
But my internet is kind of sucking for some reason, so nah, forget about it. I'll just stay with the laptop. Yeah, I mean, you won't, you won't, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to share your screen unless you have installed something Look, that you share it. Unpublished material. There you go. That's the photo I was working on now. You can see it. Not really. Can't really see it. Okay. Too small. Yeah. But that's the other it. problem that I noticed when when you were showing the pictures earlier, and I wasn't in the hangout yet. It was so small. And I'm not sure how anybody would be able to to make that broadcast hangout larger that that you can see the pictures better. It's just kind of sad. That's all you get is yeah. a. Like They're a working small, on that, I think. To just they are. Yeah, that would be good. Even if it was like live on on YouTube, you switch over to YouTube and you watch it there, and you make it as big as your screen. That would be that yeah. would be cool. I was trying to show you something. Let me see if I can do this. Maybe if you turn down the the, um, uh, the, the, the lightness of your of your monitor all the way down, that may be better. Yeah. Wait a second. I'm looking for the folder. Photos, things. You want to see strippers or hookers? The hookers are all in the choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's all good. Source, that's the that's the source material. And I'm gonna try to scroll. I'm going through these, and as you can see, there is a lot of it. And this is just the stuff I shot until August last year. So, Ricardo. Yeah. Uh, what what kind of equipment are you taking through these clubs? I don't I don't know if Thomas asked that or not. Maybe he did. Oh. I use a Leica M9P, and I use a Canon 1D Mark IV. Okay. And if I go in to do a shoot outside hours, I'll take a phase one. So you're not exactly inconspicuous, right? I mean, you got some, no. a lot of gear with you. I've, sh I've shot with these in strip. Oh, man. That's, this is not inconspicuous. Yeah. And where are most of your shoots, where you take most of your pictures, in what country is that? That's there, are two, there are two clubs I do most of the shooting in. One is in the UK, one is in Prague. Okay. I've shot in, the, in clubs in Riga, in mm -hmm. Germany. In, I have full access to 14 strip clubs in Portugal. I just never go there because my best buddy owns them. Oh, okay. So just come over and shoot. But, and he just came out of jail, so now he's a good time to go. He was inside for a few weeks. So you get around a lot in Europe then? That's yeah. pretty nice, yeah. I, I run a software company. That's what provides the income. I own oh. a software company, too. Oh, but okay. we have this problem that we don't have two clients in the same country. Mm -hmm. That makes you have to travel around. Mm -hmm. Do you do that for contract work as well, or is it just for your, for your own personal pleasure? Photography, for lack of I hire way. myself out if it's something that interests me in building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. I will charge for work. Let me just see. Come in. It's not a message from the <laughs> um, No, one of the girls on those photos has her birthday tonight, and she's staying in. in the, I have two apartments here because of a project, and she's staying in the next apartment. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can I can see like if I think about Italy, there's a lot of. A lot of stuff still going on where you go into a mechanic's um, office or something, and there's these calendars hanging with the girls that are not naked, but they're dressed. And I saw your Christmas shots of those girls. They look really nice. And I figured this would make an awesome calendar, stuff like that, that you could sell. And uh, I'm not looking to make money from photography yeah. directly. If I publish, if I photograph something or if I publish something, it will be because I have a story to tell. Okay. I have... I have three stories that I want to tell. Uh, one of them is this story about brothels, but I'll have to wait like 20 years to publish them because those are very sensitive. Mm -hmm. uh, I have the one about strippers. I can get away with that very easily. Mm -hmm. uh, stri stripping in Europe is not a taboo. As a no, no. But, and in Germany, 
hooking is not a taboo, but most of the hookers there are from Romania and from Poland. It, it, really it's fun. mostly used, yeah, it's mostly used in Europe. And then if you're saying, yeah, it, it mm -hmm. meant prostitution is not legal in all European countries, but stripping is. So you can do, yeah, you can do whatever. It's just a prostitution, I think, is legal in Holland, Germany, Germany Holland, Austria, not Holland. in Italy, I know that. Uh, what about and England? It's tolerated in Spain in a weird way, as long as the owner of the establishment does not okay. have rooms in the place. So they okay. just build these places where you have a club, a door, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and the next there is a door to a hotel. So yeah. Spain is actually the biggest brothel in Europe. It's everywhere. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, I didn't but I've never shot in Spain. No, but the one about the the one brothel. I shoot in two brothels, and the first one was a lucky shot because uh, one of the girls that I had shot in Apples went to work there. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know she was a hooker. I thought she was a stripper. Some okay. girls, they alternated in both jobs, and she showed the photos to the boss. And I had only, that was like one month into this project, and she showed the photos to the boss, and I get a phone call. Hello, my name is Stefan Arman. We saw some of your photos, and we would really love to have you shooting here. Okay, and uh, where is here? Oh, it's a sauna club. And I, I was quite interested. I didn't know what the sauna club was in Germany. And it gave me the URL, and I remember my first reaction was, oh, that kind of sauna club. Sauna club. club. <laughs> that sounded like a dream coming true. And then he told me that I could go there and sleep there and stay there as long as I wanted, as long as I got him some good shots. Wow. Well. Then uh, I did that for a year and a half, uh, once a month, give or take. Mm -hmm. And I wish I knew then where I was going with this project. Yeah. Uh, because I was, I was kind of experimenting. Like the second time I shoot a woman naked, I'm shooting in a place where no photographer has access to shoot a woman naked because it's in a block in Germany. And, then, wow. and, and I'm kind of still struggling to hold the camera steady. <laughs> and, I don't uh, want to ask a question that has been asked before, but did you ever feel threatened by some of the people in like in a strip club when you pull out your camera and start shooting and they're coming and saying why are you taking my picture did that ever happen or did you answer that question before? Well, normally what I do I leave my camera with the bouncer and then when I want to shoot I go to the bouncer and I pick it up that kind of puts a message through that you're protected mm -hmm. bouncers in these places they tend to be mean I think people have to weigh the fear they have of the bouncer from the fear they have of being yeah. shot. It just feels natural because I have permission to shoot in there. Yeah. And, um, the patrons, I think they just think these guys making some photos for the club. And I'm actually making yeah. some photos for the club. All the clubs, they use my, they use my photos for their I think I think also the fact that it is in Europe and where we're stripping is, is not something that is as, as badly looked at as in North America, where people maybe don't mind having their picture taken being in a strip club. Yeah, I do see some guys minding. The typical yeah. sign, if his face looks like this, when I'm pointing the camera, he minds. Yes, <laughs> obviously, that's true. So if I see someone having that kind of reaction, I just, mm -hmm. or I shoot it because I want that kind of reaction, or I don't. Yes. Or yeah. I don't, because I already have that shot, you know? Mm -hmm. so I have. Um, covering his face. How many of those do I need? Yeah. So all we do is just well, find the interesting shots. As long as you're friends with the with the bouncers, you, I think you're safe, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's important. You got to get yeah. that cleared up at the beginning, and then I think yeah. you yeah you shouldn't have a yeah. problem. You have to be you have to be friends with the strippers. Yeah. And not to have permission from the manager or the owner. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's the owner. The owner of the club in Prague, you ask me to shoot his wedding, for fuck's sake. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, the owner that's, here. A, that's a compliment. You have to take that as, well, as what it is, you know? The, the owner of the club here is trying desperately to date this girl again because that's his ex girlfriend. And actually, she lives with me. So <laughs> that kind of puts the relationship with <laughs> Okay. I try to do this thing. For example, here you have an apartment, you have two apartments and eight rooms, and I rent two of them out to strippers, and that kind of builds a closeness. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is mixed up. We have IT and strippers. Well, it has to be. 
Yeah, but it's good fun. It also keeps my guys happy because they're walking around and their dream is that these girls gonna, are going to walk around the house naked. They don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's pretty disappointing. Well, I assume, I assume here, this is just an assumption, you're not married. Oh, I am. My wife knows what I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't tell it, though. I published it. I published it something like that. It's the best hangout ever. And then <laughs> my wife has my Educational. I think you <laughs> remember the Christmas shots with the girls yes. with big boobs and yeah, yeah. yeah. So I published that on on Facebook, a couple of those and a few other shots, and I got home and my wife was smoking in the balcony and she comes to me, hey, I saw some of your studio work. It looks great. It, well, it does. I'm waiting for Greg. <laughs> it does. The the one photo of the stools is is awesome. Um, the stools and just the one girl. Um, she's not even naked. It, that is a great photo. Yeah, I have, I have a okay. few other. Personally, for me, those are post shots, by the sorry. way. I'm <laughs> sorry to give that away, but I just told her, hey, go over there. There is this beautiful line in your direction, and just act like you're a little bit bored. She loved that shot too, but that, <laughs> that I have to confess is a post shot. Mm. Some of these shots, I, I personally believe that they're even nicer when they're not completely naked. There's just that little bit of, I don't know, that little bit of imagination left that makes it so much more interesting. And at yeah, least that's I'm, my I'm opinion. I'm not focusing on, on shooting dress papers. Mm-hmm. Which is nice. I mean, like, if they're dressed and if they're really happy with their work, I cannot imagine them being dressed bo- boring, right? They have always something on that makes them look really pretty, so... I'm assuming here. I, I can't see them running around in sweatpants or something. Oh, I, I see them running around in sweatpants. Sweatpants. But do they want their pictures taken then? I've made a few. Care. I have some photos of the backstage. They're not quite as interesting, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I just built over the years this, this close relationship with a few clubs, and I built a portfolio. Mm-hmm. But nowadays, if I walk into a club and I'm in the mood, and I always check out the clubs in every city I go because yeah. I might get the next gold mine in there. <laughs> and um, now I'm at the point where actually they ask me to shoot. I don't ask to shoot anymore. So yeah. I get almost every time I go to a club, if I show some stuff in my iPhone, I've even brought the iPad, but it's a bit, a bit too conspicuous to put in a strip club. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been invited by other brothels in Germany to go shoot there, but I'm quite busy nowadays, so it's a bit hard to do that. But brothels is a more of a full immersion kind of thing. Strip clubs, you go there for three hours, you make a few photos, you come back. But the brothels, you go there for a whole week and you sleep there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'm going to do it again, because it's if stripping is a world that is hidden away, the world of brothels in Germany is a uh, vacuum. One of the times that I, that I went to one of those, uh, I met the, the, the chapter lead of the House Angels, and the House Angels in Germany run like one third of the brothels. <laughs> I know, I know. They're not, they're completely different from the ones over here in North America. They're businessmen. And, they're um, businessmen, okay. they're absolutely businessmen, yes. Yeah, and they invited me to shoot for their clubs. That's going to be awesome when I find some time, but... Uh, I have my company and I have a startup mm-hmm. and the startup is just going to start going public, the product is ready and we're going to go yeah. public in February. I mean, my recommendation anytime you get involved in something like that is just always to be extra careful because, you know. You know me. Oh, you yeah. don't know me. I get away with a lot of stuff. Okay, good. <laughs> No, it was just, yeah, I mean, they are, they're not kidding around. You know? I'm starting oh, to think about no. that's true. Yeah. So. yeah, you're quite the storyteller there. <laughs> oh, no, but uh, if you, you might not know, but there are photos of three ma- mafia bosses in my stream on Flickr and stuff like that. But those mm-hmm. are from Portugal. Because I own the strip club. Um, I thought this was in Portugal because it's not it's legal. The girls work for the mafia bosses. They became their friends. Uh, one one thing I didn't do that I could have done. I once saw a, a drug deal. Uh, the drugs arriving, the whole process, how they test them, the, what they are doing. I was invited to see that, but that was 
before I, I I got into photography when I got my first strip club or when when I got my 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 strip club or when I got my first child, which were both more or less at the same time. But at that time I was really a noob. That was just before the new. And um, I had so many photographic opportunities in Portugal of shooting this underworld. Because somehow I got respected in the underworld because a guy that pays his bills on time in this world is quite well respected. <laughs> and wow. I had a lot of respect because I took, one club, I took one club that was going bankrupt. And in two months I turned it into the most grossing club in Portugal. Mm -hmm. And you provide them revenue, you get the respect. What town we're talking about? Which uh, it was outside Lisbon. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was 2007. Uh, no, 2006. Okay. Uh, I turned that club around. It was. It, it, it all started in the bat. And um, I guess the economy can be as bad as it wants. These kinds of establishments always work well, right? Ah, no. money for that. No, it's not true. Yeah. No, yeah, is it going bad for you too, or because it's really bad. Portugal right now is really in the dumps, economically yeah, speaking. Are in the dumps too. Two of the best strippers oh. in Portugal are here in the UK. Oh, uh, working in this club because they got yeah. good jobs, so that they could make some really good money around Christmas. Around here in England, men still get very drunk at night, which is a good precondition to get into a strip club and walk out of very good wallet empty. Hmm. Well, it, it costs, yeah, I, I figured that's... Is there, sorry, like, I'm really ignorant about this because I never went to one, but is there a cover, cover charge when you go to a strip club or you just have to pay for drinks? Do you mean for me or for a patron? No, for n a normal person that goes to a strip club. Uh, depends, on the cl depends on the country. Usually there might be a cover charge or the obligation of consuming something. Okay. In the U.S., I think I paid... I went to one in Vegas and... Um, I think I paid 15 bucks to get in. Oh, wow. That's then if you, if you wanted to enjoy, uh, to have a lap dance with a girl, the price went from $20 for a song. Uh, That's cheap. A song lasts three minutes. Multiply three minutes by the hour. And remember, guys are suckers and they tip and everything. Yeah. Because, for example, here, it costs 20 pounds. So it's like $500 yeah. current exchange rate. And... Um, the girls, I'm just, I'm just thinking about some of the clubs that are in Spain that are not strip clubs, they're just dancing clubs. You pay like 50 bucks to go in there. So I'm thinking, yeah. this is really cheap. Yeah, but in Spain, the business of strip is that because you have all those hooker places and you pay 30 euros to go to bed mm. half an hour. They're kind of ruining the strip club business in there, except in two places like Malaga. Or, yeah. uh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know it was that... Uh, Affordable to go to a strip club. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> it is cheap. Yeah, no, it sounds like. I mean, your drinks your are probably expensive, cheap. but yeah. I don't remember the last time I paid to get into a strip club. What about women? Do you see any patents that are women? Oh, yeah, I have a few shots of that. I have to publish them. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you'll have drunk girls on hand party going into the strip club. That's one pattern. Mm -hmm. and here in this club, I have a few photos of that. There were two lesbians, and one of them looked really like him. Okay. She more manly than anyone in the Death Valley. And she looked, <laughs> looked more manly than Michael <laughs> Thomas Corp. Do you remember him? Thomas? Thomas um, went to get wine like an hour ago, it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, what happened to him? <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, I don't know. He has to go and squeeze the grapes or something. I don't know. I'm to Napa Valley. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the other look quite feminine, and they hang out in there every single night from beginning to end. And wow. not spending too much money, but doing a few dances with the girls. And they did that for about two weeks. I, I got a few shots of that. And um, the girls kind of adopted them and uh -oh. made money with them and stuff like that. Also, you do know that about. 10% to 20% of the strippers and about 30% of the hookers are lesbians, right? Well, I, it, kind of, it kind of figures. You kind of get tired of all these guys all the time, right? I yeah. could imagine that, personally. It's, I don't know. I'm wondering how I will put... I never met... I told you in the book. 
you think would you buy a book that I wrote with all this shit? Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It, it it really depends if there's a good story in it. Yes. Yeah. You know, if there's photos and a story that goes with it, why not? It's not. These are human beings. It's not just. I appreciate something like that more than just pictures of naked women or or. No, I would. Plan yeah. To any any single photo of a naked woman in my book, or I might. Just for. At most, 20% photos of naked women and all of them Facebook. But the you thing know, is, you 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 tell you tell a story with it. You know, yeah. you're not just going for the for the visual. You're going for the feeling too. So that's I, I think that would be a good book. You want to know the story behind this photo? Sure. Yeah, it's a photo I thought I spoiled because this was taken with a Panasonic GH1 and I, it was kind of overblown and stuff. And the, I was going now through my record. I remember this photo. I was like, ah, this is the photo I, I said shit when I took it because the pose was so great. And uh, this was a girl I met her there in that uh, sauna club. And she looked really nice and fresh and young. And I asked her, how old are you? I'm uh, 18, years and 18 years and five days. And how long are you here? Five days. Wow. Oh. She was waiting for legal age. And why are you here? Well, I wanted to buy a car, and all my, a few of my friends were here. They told me if I stayed here a couple of weeks, I could buy a car. And she did. Never saw her again. That's no. the story behind that photo. Her name was Xenia. She was from Rio, Latvia. Okay. Is it so sad? What? Is it happy? I don't know. It's, uh, uh, I don't know either. I, I no. That kind no. of. I, I think all the, all the patrons of that establishment are waiting for when she wants to buy an apartment now. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the punchline, by the way. I have this story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ricardo, when you're uh, when you're ready to tell your story um, yeah. of all these things, how will you do it? Will it be by a book? Yeah, it will be a book. I think I, I, I need to let you figure out if I could be sued for libel for publishing the book or not and stuff like that. You're going to wait a while, though, right? Well, the one on the brothels, I'm definitely going to wait a really long while. <laughs> <laughs> until I move to another continent. Part of the reason why I moved to live in Turkey might have to do with that. And um, what was it? The weather. It's the weather. <laughs> uh, the one about the sweepers, I'm... A lot of the girls have asked me, what are you going to do with these photos? I'm going to publish a book. Oh, great, send me a copy. What about model releases? That's the point. I haven't bothered to collect model releases. So I have a few. From, it's a shoot for a club to be published on the internet and stuff like that. Yeah. If it's an art book, like street photography, you need a model releases. You need model releases for commercial purposes if you're selling a product. Associated yeah. someone's image with the product. I wouldn't be worried about that. I could be worried about getting sued for libel or something. Like that. I'm. I would be worried if you are making a book. Let's say you write this book and you publish it, and Amazon is selling it, and there are tons of people buying it. And what I would be concerned, but again, I don't have any information about this. That you make money on it, and one of the girls say, "Hey, I want part of this money." Because you don't have a model release of her. That's what I feel. Yeah, I think basically, if you make money on it, you need a model release. Yes. So they could no, not, they now, don't sue you. They just I mean, want money from you. If you make money on a street photo, you don't need a model release. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't worried because I don't need to make money on this. Maybe I'll give the book away. Maybe yeah. I'll the story. I don't know. I Most of the reason I've done it is it's loads of fun to do. You wouldn't believe how many interesting people I've met over the years. And um, it's really good if I want to go to so this guy, everyone pulls out the red card and says, Ricardo, go in. Yeah, I mean, the smoking corner. The smoking corner is the worst. Oh, the smoking corner. Yeah, I cannot smoke inside the house, so I have to smoke outside. Oh, so and you're outside on the balcony now? Oh, I see. Oh, wow. I'll buy some more. Uh-oh, now it's broken. Oh. 
Let me try. I'll have to go really outside. I think he, here I have the Wi-Fi here. Yeah. I see all the guys are stunned now. They're all sitting there staring at the screen and like... <laughs> yeah, I'm taking You're doing such a good job interviewing. <laughs> I'm thinking of how we can take this whole storyline and turn it into an HBO show. That's what I'm thinking about. Um, you know, we were talking about Big Love earlier, and so now how can we make a show out of this, this guy, <laughs> this character that goes into all these somewhat shady places and he's a photographer and all his stories. That'd be great. Yes, it would be. Better than some of the other stuff that's running yeah. on air right now. That's for sure. What is it, a hog hunters? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Oh, no, there's female hog hunters now. Am I right? I saw a commercial for that, yeah. Oh, oh and, my God. And that's does anyone funny. else think that... Uh, Thomas's chair, like every time it flashes up on the screen every now and then, it kind of looks like that scene from Twin Peaks with the red curtains. Have you seen Twin Peaks? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, no, I was actually red. thinking Ice White Shot oh, and I saw it. Oh, okay. Oh, that's me out. <laughs> if there's a midget that walks through, then we're in trouble. Yeah, yeah I will freak out. Speaking I can't backwards. believe there's a live yeah. hangout going on and the host of the hangout is not here. <laughs> I heard his voice like a minute ago, so he's nearby or talking to somebody or something. He's probably getting a midget, and then they will <laughs> walk by, and it will just be very surreal. <laughs> I'm know. sorry, not. I didn't mean to say midget. Phone. I mean, I'm going to a strip club and provide you with real time vision. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bring some LED lighting though, otherwise it's going to be bad. I don't need LED lighting. I know the lighting in the club. The lights, they, the lights, they cycle red, green, blue, white. Shoot. Red, green, <laughs> blue, white. Shoot. Now, it, it, it would be very interesting for sure. It just, again, are they going to let the light, well, you don't have to tell them. But I'm afraid yeah, that's it. You're not lighting into clubs. That's taboo. No flashes. Flashes worry people. If you're flashing, well, you're yeah. Photographer. But you said you had a you had a Leica. You have a like a Noctilux or something like that. Yeah, I should. Be, I didn't say I had a Noctilux, but I do have. Well, I'm assuming <laughs> that's what they you mostly use to shoot the concerts and stuff. I thought that's why I was assuming yeah, you'd have that. Me. Don't show me. That's just mean. <laughs> what you got there? What was that? Yeah? What, what did you show us? I showed you a Leica Noctilux, Noctilux. M. Oh, wow. Mm. F1.0. <laughs> I don't know which is better, the girls or the picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> the glass. Yes. Lunch porn. Absolutely. Wow. No, this is a dream. It's a dream, but I wouldn't even know the first thing how to manual focus everything. That would just—that's the one thing that's just. Oh my God! Even if I had the money. It's not about manual focusing. Use the same technique as street photography. Uh, there is no way you can keep up, or any in those lights, there is no way auto focus can keep up with it. So I you have suppose. to guess where you're going to make the shot. Mm -hmm. you're gonna, Technique goes like this. Depends on what you're shooting, but you find the, the few spots where you're, if you're using an autofocus camera, you find the few spots where the camera is able to autofocus, and then you point it there, mm -hmm. and you wait for something interesting to happen there. And if you can do that in about three seconds, then yeah. you're in. But the girls, they will be dancing, and they'll be going from one pole to the next and stuff. There will be lights. If the light shines on the floor, the floor is enough compressed. Yeah. I use the 1D4 when I want to use autofocus, and I'm dying for the 1DX. The one thing I saw on the 1DX that was interesting was that they told me it focuses with two less stops of light. Nice. I was thinking, the door that's going to open to me. Mm -hmm. so I actually was only shooting in the Leica uh, in two clubs, and I brought out the 1D4 just to get acquainted again with the camera because I just had it to shoot. Uh, sportsy kind of stuff. I never use it in low light. And I brought, uh, I started bringing the, the 1D4 recently into strip clubs for two reasons. The, the Leica is a lot easier to get away with, especially the M9P because it doesn't have the red dot on the front. And okay. 
It's almost invisible, the camera. Yeah. yeah. It's a black camera with the <laughs> logo, looks old. Yeah. Okay. And uh, re recently, I started just, the people were so used to seeing me with a camera, with a Leica, without a logo and stuff, I decided, let me try to bring a, a, the Canon. But the Canon is a little bit bigger than the 1D4. But mm -hmm. it can shoot, and it's the only camera. Uh, I tried the 5D Mark II, and it just couldn't focus at that time. Mm -hmm. And manual focus. Depends. I'll do manual on focus. The lens. Yeah, I use the 51 too. It's the widest open they have. Uh, the 85 is too slow and too long. You don't want to shoot long in the strip club for two reasons. Camera okay. shape and you want context. Yes. Although I have the, a lot of the shots you like, they are shot in the 35 millimeter lens. And I have some shots maybe the 24. I, I use the 24 Canon one. Canon actually did make an, Canon actually did make an EF lens, uh, 50 F1. Yeah, but um, what I read about it is not very sharp. I, I I will shoot with the with the 51 too, but I shoot at 1.4 because it's not sharp enough for my taste at the 1.2. Yes, I can hmm. see that. Yeah. Yeah, you you won't see a lot of shots made at f 1.2. Uh, they're mostly shot at f 1.4. And I'm now trying to develop technique for shooting action better. Uh, so I've okay. been dumping the ISO a little bit and trying to go 1 to 100, 1 to 150 of a second at F4. And then it gets really difficult because you can shoot with, for example, in this club, the blue light is on 80% of the time because the girls don't like white light shining mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. And um, blue light only excites very little of the camera because only one quarter of the sensors are blue. No. Oh. Yeah. Now you're starting to talk technical here. Wow. <laughs> I'm as technical as, you, as they get. I'm a software engineer. I train. <laughs> okay. So green light helps. Green light does help because then you... Cameras, they have this ISO rating and shit. But when you're talking monochrome lighting, then mm -hmm. things break up and you have to figure out yourself. But blue light is the worst enemy I have. Really? Yeah, because blue light does not make people pretty, reflects in weird ways. No. I was just thinking about green light being the same. Like, I, w I don't know if I would want to see myself green in green light all the time. No, no, I'm talking about making black and whites. Okay. Uh, I make the black and white out of it, but I get a much better black and white if I have white light shining on the person or red oh, light yeah. shining on the person. I know. And then, and then you start learning how these lights affect the camera. The red light saturates really easily, so although there is only one... One out of four is red. They seem to be a little bit more sensitive to the kind of intensities of red because I think red, if you want to shine red on someone and show him, you have to shine a bit stronger red because our eyes are not as sensitive to red. So oh, I, I don't know. I, I, think I don't have the whole technique figured out. I, I know how to shoot it. I've seen your pictures. I don't, I don't think you're doing so poorly, actually. Sorry. Yeah. You're doing pretty well. I'm trying to improve it. No. Well, there was a couple of, of, with a little bit of motion blurriness, but just a couple. And I know that a photographer has to shoot a bunch of pictures to get just a few good ones. I understand that. This is, that's what happens to me, too. But what you got looks really, really good. I mean... Yeah, but there are the things I'm not shooting at the moment because I cannot oh. because it's going to be blurry. And there are things I want to shoot that I'm not showing. Mm -hmm. I'm to develop techniques we have you're seeing a subset of what I see because I see with my eyes yeah. that I show what I can do with the camera. With the Leica, it's interesting because you're, the Leica M9, you won't be able to pull off more than 10 shots per minute Yeah. because of the speed of writing to the card and stuff. So with the M9, I use one technique. Uh, I'm liking to shoot with the Canon. It's different. With the M9, I get, if I shoot 80 photos with the M9 into, in an hour, I keep about... 50 of those. If I shoot with the 1D4, and I'll ruin 30 for some reason, and then, and then of course some won't be interesting, and one will make it to the portfolio. But usable shots that I, that I can give to the girls, but I give the shots to the girls, by the way. They love it. And um, I choose it a little bit, but I'm a lot more choosy than they are. I hate it when they are coming because I have to convert every single photo to black and white because they are blue, and they say, I love these shots. Come on, it's shit. It's crappy. The composition's happened. No, I want it. Okay. 
I have a couple of presets in Lightroom that do a reasonable job. I will do my conversions with Silver Effects Pro for the good one. And um, good night, guys. I'm taking off. Bye, Dave. Good night. See you later. Good night, Sarah. Bye. Bye. Yeah, I won't be able to stay much longer because I actually have a nine-year-old that needs to go to bed soon. So, but then when I'm gone, you guys can talk about this stuff much better without me. I know. No, you're a great interviewer. <laughs> yeah. Let me try to hang out. Oh, see, I get unknown error when I try to hang out with the phone. Oh, <laughs> maybe because I mean you're logged in with both accounts right now. That no, no, I, I, think I think the phone does not support these new kind of hangouts. My oh, the on broadcast ones. I think that's what's doing you it. You have an Android? Oh, I got a no. Yeah, I have an, uh, the Google one. Yeah. Hmm. I think it's because this uh, Hangout is being uh, broadcast right now. That's why. Mm -hmm. Maybe they don't have support for those ones yet. Uh, it's a pity because I, I'm in five minutes. I'm busting off to go pick up the girls. <laughs> and, uh, I could I could document the whole thing for you. Well, you can still <laughs> document it and then upload videos. I don't. I hate shooting video. Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> it's it's yeah. It's hard. I'm very technical. I'm not going to publish a photo that sucks. I try yeah. at least. Yeah. A lot of it for different reasons, just because of my lack of taste or anything like that. And I, I will even not try to shoot a photo that sucks. If I know it's going to suck, why am I shooting it? Uh, and um, if I, when I make video, it's going to kick ass. But I don't know how to shoot kick ass video. So when I don't shoot it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I, I see the, and, and when I see the kind of kit that guys have to use to stabilize video and shit, I cannot see myself walking around the strip club with that. Well, you know well, those things? You, you could. The whole harness. Video, you could ask what, um, sorry, the name, uh, Ron, what Ron wanted to do. You could say, hey, what would happen if I would ever bring a camera team around or something like that and have somebody else shoot it for you? And see what their reaction is, you know. I know. I could get away with that. Hmm. If you're friends with the bouncers. No, I'm friends with the managers. The okay. bouncers are better. an accessory, okay. but you also make you also make friends with them. But you have to be friends with the managers, and the manager tells the bouncers. Yeah. That they're friends with you. Yeah. But you take you take pictures for the bouncers, too. Yeah. I yeah. Pictures. I have lots of pictures with the bouncers and the girls. They love pictures of bouncer and girl. Then they yes. ask me on Facebook. If you go to Facebook and you find me and uh, I have a friend set that has lots of behind the, behind the scenes shots. Or well, I don't go to Facebook anymore, but I should probably do that for you there. That yeah. sounds interesting. Yeah. I'm going to move them to Google Plus. The other thing you can do is wait and I'll move them to Google Plus one day. Just face those shots, they are organized on Facebook. And, you know, Facebook is not very easy to explode stuff. And yeah. I have these 174,000 photos sitting on the hard drive where those shots were chosen from. And Do you ever delete anything? Yeah. Uh, sorry, Gary. Oh, just back up too. Don't want to lose them, do you? Oh, I figured out a great way to have a cloud backup. Yeah. I have a nightmare about cloud backup, and it cost me $129 a month. Wow, that's a lot of money. Yeah, that's uh, out of most people's price range. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but this is, I have a Mac Mini in a hosting company, and I have okay. a Pegasus R6 connected to it, which mirrors the Pegasus R6 I have here. So I have these two things mirroring each other, and then I have okay. a drone in Turkey. So these things are mirrored. One copy is in Turkey, one copy is in the U.S., one copy is in England. Well, you've got an earthquake in Turkey and you're covered in England. Yeah. Perfect. And the good thing is the ones that are in the U.S., I don't have a static backup. I have really a computer connected to the, to the photo. So if I need a photo, I can log on to that computer, process it there, because I have Photoshop and Capture One and mm -hmm. all the stuff I use, and export it. Kind of got it figured out. Well, you're really up to date with your hobby, man. If it's just a hobby, that's a lot of time and a lot of money invested right there. Yeah. Yeah. I do everything. If I do something in life, I'm going to do it seriously. 
I, I get that. I get that vibe of you. I can definitely tell. Well, I, I was all proud of myself going to Vancouver for a photo today, and I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> How'd that go, by the way? <laughs> oh, great. Very happy. I did pick myself up a little gift, though, but that's just um, on the road. Love about you guys in the U.S. is these photo hangouts. I gotta start something. It's not the hangout here, but when you go on the photo yeah. walks and stuff. Oh yes. We're not doing that in Europe. It sucks. They do. They do. You gotta check out. I think there was one in London. Wasn't there one in London recently? I'm pretty sure there was. We're organizing one in. I'm bringing in a couple of American photographers in in January, mm -hmm. and they're gonna do a mixture of mountain and street clubs. So we're, we're gonna start by shooting mountains. Uh, <laughs> and then we finish the last three days yeah. What you should do, you should uh, publicize that. You should write that on your on your on your Google page and say, hey, this is what's going to happen in January. If you're in the area, let me know, and you're going to get an invite. And then and then you, I'm sure you're going to get a ton of people interested in it. Yeah, that one has to be. The problem is you cannot bring 50 guys in a photo walk into a street club and let them shoot. Well, no. Get away with bringing a couple. I can't imagine. Honestly, I'll bring my drinks. <laughs> if you bring 50 guys to take, take pictures of mountains, I don't think all 50 are going to come with you to a strip club. I doubt that very much, yeah. personally. So you may be able to do the. I think mountain. they probably would. Really? <laughs> no, I, I don't know point. any guy that would say no to that. Really? <laughs> well, you know what? And I know very few. Would you say no to that if, if you're doing that photo walk and the last three days were shooting in a strip club? Would you say no? I don't think so. It depends on the guy. It depends on his wife. It depends on a whole <laughs> bunch of things. You know, it's not that easy. But I'm assuming if somebody says, I'm coming to this photo walk that is going to do mountains in strip clubs, when they're saying they're coming, I'm assuming that they're going to be willing to go to the strip club, yes. But then, I, again, I don't think you'll get 50 people. That's just me thinking as a female. You yeah. may get some girls. I wouldn't mind taking pictures of girls in a strip club because I would be hiding behind my Never, never did your life as that. Yeah, you know. Okay, how's everybody doing? Oh, we have an nice. idea for a TV show. Oh. <laughs> you, what is that? It's uh, we we kind of got the, the the plot line figured out here. It's, it it'll be on HBO. Yeah. Uh, it's about a photographer that photographs strip clubs and other shady areas, and it, yeah. it's just about his stories. Just play back the, the live stream. You'll get the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, then. Well, wow, that sounds interesting. I, won I wonder whose life this would be based on. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is that the guy that he's hiding? Yeah, why, yeah, he's, why, is he, why can't we just see the top of his head? He because forgets to adjust, yeah. I was not looking at myself and the laptop kind of got wrong. Mm. Yeah. I cannot stand still a lot. You notice that, right? I don't like to stay in the same. I had to. I had to talk to my kids. They're all down in Los Angeles. So I had to talk to the kids on the phone. Oh, that's important. Yes, it's very important. Where Where are you at, Thomas? I'm in Oakland. Oh, okay. So my dad is from Oakland. Oh, is he? It's a nice place. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, but I. I think for, for doing the kind of stuff I do, getting a wife like I have is great. Because my, well, the last time I published some really pretty photos of some really pretty girls was just before I went home last time. And then she said, hey, Ricardo, I love those photos. Could you make some photos of a friend of mine? And then, I don't know, you see it on my stream, a Gogo Cola. Sends me out to go make photos of Gogo Cola. She's like the most drop-dead, gorgeous, half Siberian, half whatever. I don't think that's something that a typical wife would do. Well, if she feels safe in her marriage, yes, she will. Wait, this is your your wife, Ricardo? Yeah, that's my wife. Oh, I didn't know you were married. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you wouldn't think so. <laughs> you <laughs> missed that part. I asked him that. Fingers, you see, my fingers, they're not lined up properly here. It's very hard to wear a ring because it bites into this skin. You see this skin here? 
if I wear a ring here, it bites in this, this skin. So somehow I started to put my ring on that side and it fits perfectly. Ah, okay. Well, that's a good trick. I'll have to try that one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could go to strip clubs, yeah. Uh, no, I really do. I don't know how liberal depends. my wife was when I married her. I should have gotten the vibe when, when I got the interview with, the, with her mother. She's Russian. And she said something like, my wife says, oh, you need to speak with my mother before you can be married. I'm like, oh, shit, it's going to be tough. What is she going to ask me? <laughs> <laughs> I get there. I don't speak, I didn't speak any Russian at that time. I didn't speak a lot. And the mother-in-law turns to my wife, says something in Russian. My wife turns to me. Do you get drunk a lot? Well, that was not the phone, but that was the tone of the mother, okay, not my wife. No. Sorry for interrupting here, but I hear my son screaming, so I think I need to run and put him to bed. Sorry for going. It's really been interesting. Nice meeting you all, you guys. All right, Karen. Take care. Good night. Take care. Good night. Good night. Take care. Yeah. All right. Wow. So we scared away our one female uh, panelist. No, she was doing the interviewing. Oh, yeah. Really? We were all quiet this whole time. Yeah, she was getting it, all the info. Was I was trying to join the hangout from the phone, Thomas. Why? Because it's one of these live hangouts. I get an unknown error. They haven't updated the app yet. It's a pity uh -huh. because I could bring my phone into a strip club and give you some live stuff. That would be cool. What, what kind of phone is that? That's the newest, uh, the ICS phone. The Google Nexus? Yeah. Right. This one right here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Same one. Look at that. We met. Yeah, you you like that just proves that we are both gadget freaks, right? Right, I know. We have to get it right away. You yeah. want that more than the iPhone? I still love the iPhone, but this one has one feature that I need. I always need an Android phone around because I have this international SIM card that gives me unlimited data anywhere in the world. Yeah. But it's actually based on an AT&T SIM card. It's sold by another company, but it's AT&T, and AT&T switches off the bloody tethering on it. Ah. But they, they don't switch off the Wi-Fi tethering on the Android. So my, tether, my tethering, if I try to tether on this Nexus, it yeah. tells me you have to pay Verizon $20 a month if I want to turn it on. Switch to AT&T then, because AT&T doesn't do that apparently. But no, AT&T is terrible. AT&T, their signal is awful. I don't They're know, I've never, in the US, I don't care. But yeah. I, what I know is I pay $249 a month and I have unlimited internet anywhere in the world. Two hundred and forty-nine dollars a month. That's a lot, Ricardo. Well, that saved me a thousand bucks in phone calls every month. Wow. That's still that's a lot. If you do, every every tried international roaming, my phone bill used to be about two and a half thousand, and thanks to these, it went down to a thousand and something. I'm never in the place where you know roaming. You go to another country, you play, you pay through your note for phone calls. Yeah, I just don't, I just don't use a phone in the other country. Yeah, but I'm never in the country where my phone is from. I do roaming 365 days a year. Ricardo, did you just say your bill was a thousand a month? Three. What? How? I run a company. Holy I'm shit. traveling, and I need to talk to people. I need to talk to clients to get deals, and I need to talk to my employees to get them to do stuff. Okay. So, Ricardo, what does your company do? I, do? I have a startup that I'm going to publicize soon. We've done something really cool, but it's in the enterprise world. So we're bringing real-time streams of information all the way to the screen. And the rest, uh, we do there was this old startup called Web Methods, and we do implementations of that. So. I have 20 people doing implementations of web methods around Europe. Ah, uh, so doing think, what? Doing what? Implementations of a software called Web Methods. Web Methods? Yeah. What is, what is Web Methods? What is it? Uh, it was a startup that uh, back in 2000 that I joined and worked there for four years. And uh, we do enterprise application integration. It's just uh -huh. connecting big boring systems to other big boring systems and charging clients who don't know to do that. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> well, I guess that's uh, one good way to put it. Yeah, huh? Yeah. And um, well, clients, they buy this stuff like SAP you heard about, and Cisco, yeah. Salesforce, 
And then they find out that their data is spread all over the place and the process are all over the place. And then they go and they buy one more to connect all of those. And then <laughs> someone tells them that it's really easy to run and to install and to program and stuff, and they lie. That's right. Because it's not. Process is fuck up, and then they call me. And, uh, my specialty in life is taking something that was fucked up and then fucking it up. Huh. <laughs> So these are like big corporate customers and they bought a software package and it's not working right. So they got to call you in to get it to work right. Yeah. Nokia is our client, but Nokia is not spending a lot of money like the Central Bank of Europe and other guys like that. So we don't have a lot of clients, but we have really good ones. Yeah. Well, th hey, that'll work, huh? Yeah. And uh, because they are, they all see themselves as really important companies and really important guys, uh, I need to pay them a lot of attention, so I just travel around Europe, see all my clients every month or every two months. Thanks a lot, we don't have a lot, and then go around. And th the last year I hired a couple of geniuses from Argentina, and they're building something really cool that will connect to any of these enterprise systems and make something that make people in that world go, ooh, that's so cool. Hmm. So do you have clients here in the U.S. as well, or just Europe? Uh, only in Europe. Uh. Consulting rates in the U.S. are in dollars, and I have to apologize, but the dollar is a bit low. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. I hear the euro is having trouble, though, isn't it? Yeah, but it hasn't gone down. You are no. the guys who printed a few trillion of those, remember? Yeah. The kind of trouble the euro is having is the same kind of trouble that the dollars need to, need to have. Everyone should realize that money is a big, big scam. Money is a big scam, you think? Oh. Definitely. Come on. When you can triple the amount of money circulating for an economy and the currency doesn't devalue, you don't call that a scam? Yeah, maybe. Could be. Mm -hmm. Read a couple of books. Meltdown, Aftershock. Hmm. I, don't, I, don't read, I, don't, I only like to read photography books. Yeah. No, I, because I run the company, I have to... Like, when I read that, I read a few really interesting books back in 2006, 2007, and um, I decided I didn't want to be totally dependent on companies who were banks or net providers and stuff like that, so I changed my whole client base to mostly public institutions and um, companies who service them. And that's what rescued my company, that I did that ahead of time, because now, uh, Nokia used to be one, like two-thirds of my income. Yeah. Now it's not even a blip in the radar. And mm -hmm. Vodafone used to provide me a shitload of, well, the rest, and they're not spending any. Nokia doesn't make very good phones, though, do they? The, la the last one is cool. I didn't help them make the phones. I just helped them make real-time uh, manufacturing. So we right. passed on... The whole real-time manufacturing bit. We do a lot more than I explained. Yeah. We help, we help companies build processes for real-time manufacturing, for example. That doesn't help not yet. But part of the real-time manufacturing is that you have messaging, electronic messages going from their system to their suppliers saying, we need 100 more of these because I want to keep their stocks low. And if I come up with some ideas that allow them to keep their stocks, then that's going to lower their inventory by $10 million. And that's going to work because it's something that they can charge on 100,000 for. Stuff like that. Interesting. That's what pays for the phase one. Yeah. So, well, guys, hey, I think I am actually going to cut out of here. I've been on this hangout for four hours, I think. Wow. <laughs> That's going to be cool. Long time. Your chair has been here for at least an hour. <laughs> yeah. If you guys stay around, I'm going to go pick up the girls and I can have them say hi, but I don't know what time. We'll <laughs> finish at five. But All right. Well, I think the hangout. I think the hangout still goes even if I quit, but uh, yep. the broadcast goes off. I think. Yeah. So. so. All right, guys. Catch you later. See you later. See you. See you. See you. I'm also going to shoot off. Ciao.